Hello! Hope y'all are having a good morning so far. Or a good afternoon. It's afternoon here. Or a good evening. I don't know what time it is where you live. I don't matter. I had... A really goddamn bad day yesterday. <laughs> but I feel like a human again today, so it's okay. Thank you, Grand Curator, for that 2 month resub. Much appreciated. Uh, the sun came out this morning, and it was real nice. Went for a, a quick little a quick little pace around the block, and that was good. Probably gonna do a, more of a walk around dinner, after dinner. That'll be nice. It's cloudy in your area? I mean, it's cloudy here too, but it was sunny for a bit this morning, which was nice. I have a, I've got a little coffee I brewed for myself. I'm enjoying a sip. Enjoying my morning. I was originally planning on going live like an hour earlier, maybe an hour or two earlier, uh, and then didn't. You know how it is. Make a healing mind for the 26 months. The Grendels are frolicking in their prime. Nature is beautiful. Oh, this is the theme of Grendels frolicking. <laughs> Thank you for that resub. Uh, yeah, the Warframe update dropped. I have played it for all of 10, 15 minutes to set up the thing in our clan dojo so that people can actually get the new, <laughs> the new Warframe. And that's about it, because I wanted to stream. Yo, goof. 41 months of throwing. I appreciate the dedication to the craft of throwing. Thank you for the 41 months, much appreciated. I might might peck away at a, at a bit of Warframe this evening. Unless the, the urge overtakes me and I decide I want to stream more this evening. I don't think I want to stream Warframe. I just want to play that on my own at the moment. Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, originally we were thinking of doing uh, more Dark Tide with uh, Sophie and the gang, but Sophie was like, hey, I don't think I can do today. I'm very tired. Uh, and Bailey was like, hey, I don't think I can do today. Uh, I'm having computer issues. And Gibson was like, hey, I don't think I can do today. Uh, because I've got, like, a bunch of, like, you know, schoolwork and stuff to do, and I was like, okay, that works for me, because I have, like, 30 things I want to do right now. <laughs> so. Maybe one less choice isn't too bad. Hey, there'll always be other days to play Dark Tide, you know? That game's not going away as far as I know. I hope not. I just bought it. I like it. believe it's been nearly two years. Yeah! Always love catching your streams. Smile, smile. Hey, hell yeah. Smile, smile. I get curious to see the Frost Witch for that 21 month resub. Much appreciated. Hello, Bingus Poltooth. Please don't call me Hollis. I don't like being called that. That's not my name. Use my name or don't refer to me at all. <laughs> Shit's still patching. It's a very small update, file size-wise. Uh, it did not take long at all for me to update it, and I, like, did it more or less as soon as the update dropped. While, while presumably the servers would be slammed the hardest, unless, uh, people aren't on that Wednesday morning afternoon gaming grind, you know? How's my week been going? Not great, frankly. Uh, it's, uh, it's getting a little better today, though. Nothing in particular has really happened or anything like that. Uh, I just get real, real intense depressive episodes sometimes. It happens. It's not good that it happens. It's not good when it happens, but, you know. It happens. 
I'm going to live with it for better or for worse. Usually takes a couple days of going, hey man, what the fuck my brain doing? Why are you doing that? Cut it out. I'm telling the old horse to, you know, settle down a little bit. Very funny that this fucking music is playing while I'm talking about that. <laughs> like to see a picture of Miss Baby? Yeah, you can send me fucking cat pictures whenever you want. I love seeing cats. Hey, thanks for the bits. I appreciate it. Just because. Just cause... two. On Steam. I know it. RuneScape Halloween update is here too? Sure is! There's a reason I said I was reading multiple patch notes. <laughs> And I'm eating blueberries. Hey, the ad block is about to start. Just letting y'all know. Get a couple of minutes of ads out of the way so that we don't get like ads in the middle of the stream when I'm actually trying to do things. Oh hey. Yo, hey Trab. Thank you for the 23 months. Much appreciated. Uh, speaking of subs, uh, I did end up getting roped into the, the the Twitch Partner Plus thing. Which means I am getting more uh, a bigger cut of Twitch subs, which is nice. Uh, I like being able to go, yeah, I've got more money every month to budget with now. So that's cool. Do I like the stuff they're doing for Splatoween? I mean, all I saw was the the four hats and the and the Splatfest they announced. Are they doing more than that? Are they doing other things? Sub money to sub sandwich money? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm getting like... It's a 70-30 split now instead of a 50-50 one, which is like... What? Given that a, a sub is five bucks, then it's like... I'm getting a dollar more than I was previously. So that's like... Uh, a good couple hundred... Close to a thousand bucks extra a month that I can budget on sandwiches. Cause like... Yeah, I think it's possible for the gift sub. It's much appreciated. Cause it's like, what? Um... I think I'm allowed to talk about my sub numbers, right? That's not like something that'll get me banned or whatever. I don't think it's against my contract. I'm up at like uh, 750 sub points right now, which is pretty good, I think. So that's like, yeah, I'm getting an extra fucking 750 bucks a month American, which, hey, you convert that to Canadian, I'm getting more than that. <laughs> For once the exchange rate is working in my favor. Uh, it is. It is nice, you know? Being told, hey, we're giving you more of the money that people are giving to you now is cool. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, you know, save up, put some aside to dedicate to actually moving out, because I'd really like to do that soon. I've been wanting to do that, but spending uh, last month with my partner just kind of cemented in my head like, yeah, I gotta do this. Yeah, I gotta do this. Am I doing the Discord sub thing? I don't want to fucking deal with like seven or eight subscription services I'm pushing people towards. If you want to subscribe on a monthly basis, that's what Twitch is for. If you don't, you can just send me five bucks a month on like PayPal or whatever, you know? <laughs> I don't I don't think I necessarily need another vector for that when like people can just tip. That's that's the not giving my money to Amazon option. They're both there. I like, I like both. Uh, in the sense that it's nice to have like a, a actual solid number to look at um, every month to be like, yeah, this is like a monthly amount I can, uh, I can like budget with and work around and then tips on top of that for like other things and stuff to put in savings, you know? Nine bark for 30 months. 
Yay. Oh yeah, sign. that's true. I think you can set up, because I'm using Streamlabs right now for tips. I think I can set up something where people can do recurring ones if they want. I haven't bothered looking into it. I haven't bothered setting it up. I figure if people want to do a recurring thing, they can just come back every month and go, Hey, here's five bucks. I like your stream. To which I would go, Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Being a patch notes, I just realized something else I can pull up. Something else got patch notes recently. Just load that up and we can look at that. Maybe this is just the stream where I do a lot of that. That was already the plan, but maybe I do more a lot of that. Monster Hunter World? Oh yeah, that's true! I got a fucking thing on Steam saying that, like, some of the world servers would be going down for maintenance. I don't know what they were deploying. If anything, or maybe it was just a normal maintenance thing. Rather than an actual update. I haven't really played or thought about world in a hot minute. I'm gonna start the starting music after this song is over. So that people know the stream is starting, and then we can start. They've added a doohickey to Monster Hunter. And what you do with it is anyone's guess. You got a news thing all in Japanese for worlds? Right, that's literally what I was just talking about. It was literally just saying they were taking some of the servers down temporarily for maintenance so you wouldn't be able to get, like, event quests and stuff. It was, it was, it was just maintenance. Just, just your good old average everyday maintenance, but for some reason they put the post out in Japanese for everyone. These blueberries are good, but they're very cold. I mean, they were in the fridge, so makes sense. I might have ravioli for dinner. I'm still thinking about it. Ravioli's good. Hmm. Today I have a ravioli. Ravioli good. Today I will ham. Hmm, ham good. Today I will face the nightmares. Hmm, ham good. Can't read in Japanese, so you didn't know what it was about at the time. I can't either. Uh, there are translators on the internet, <laughs> which is what I did. You just you, you can just copy that shit and put it in Google Translate or whatever, or you can know a friend that knows Japanese and just hit them up and be like, "Hey, what is this?" <laughs> Favorite thing about humanity is basically every culture has its own version of dumplings. Look. One of the universal things that, like, all cultures recognize is that if you do shit with some grains, it's fucking good. Grains is fucking good. You can turn grains into good stuff, like dough and bread. And if you put stuff in a bread... Oh, baby! Everyone around the world knows this. It is one of the most universal experiences, aside from, you know, breathing air and having to drink water. Oh, baby. We're cooking our meat in a pot or a bag. What if you could also eat the pot or the bag? Oh. Damn, Greg was really onto something when he invented it. These blueberries are good. technically also breathe air, it's just that the substrate they get the, the oxygen from is, you know, in the water. Water's got air in it. Hi everyone! <laughs> Welcome to my stream. I'm gonna keep the intro short because we're kind of just gonna jump right into it. 
Uh, but thank you for tuning on in. It is Wednesday. We are October 18th, 2023. Uh, a bunch of my friends are away, and I wanted something to do to keep myself busy. So I'm going to click on Cows and RuneScape, and I'm going to read a couple patch notes for some different things. Uh, is that, if, that, if that sounds up your alley, hey. Let's hang out. <laughs> um, read the rules. You can tip if you want. You can sub if you want. You don't have to, but it's there if you want to toss some money my way. You can look at the Discord if you want. You can look at me on Tumblr if you want. Uh, I recently did some work for a cool project called Welcome Home. If you have ever heard of it, you can look at that. I think I did a, a fun little job recording stuff. Um, what else? Um, I saw a cat the other day. Really small. Um, and it kept staring up a tree. And I was like, hey bud, what are you looking at? And it looked at me and then it looked back up at the tree. And then I said, okay, bye! And it turned around and it stared at me from around the tree. And then it went back to staring up the tree. And then the next day I saw it at my house, staring up our tree. And then I saw it go home. It went inside. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stream now. Let me log into RuneScape and then we'll uh we'll get going. Halloween 2023. Posted on the 18th of October, 2023. Ongoing issues. Date and time. Wednesday, 18th of October, 1255 BST. Issue. Elsie isn't available upstairs at the Verrock Church in free-to-play worlds to interact with as part of the Halloween event. Current status. Investigating! Oh, yeah, I gotta use my fucking antique lamps. I'm just gonna use them on agility. Because, uh... Going out of my way to go to fucking Gnome Stronghold right now to level up agility... I'll pass. I have other things I want to do. Hey, level 10! And now I can do the Draenor Village course! Perfect. Changelog. October 18th. Can I use this? I don't think I can. I think this is a higher agility level. Yeah, agility 13. Oh well. Halloween 2023. This year's Halloween event is live. Or is go. Head over to the costumed child outside Verrock West Bank. Other changes. The bond pouch interface has been updated. Using a new option in the settings menu. Oh, hang on a sec. I want to pull up a bigger chat window so I can see chat better. There we go. Using a new option in the settings menu, you can now select whether compass options like look north should affect the vertical angle of the camera when used. Camfrina and Lorelei now recognize trimmed rune defenders when discussing the Cyclops runes. Oh yeah, there's like ornament kits and stuff that you can get for, for defenders, right? I wanna... I have fucking delusions of grandeur of someday getting the, uh the Avernic Defender from that one raid, and then getting the, the Combat Diary hilt on it, because it looks it looks pretty fucking cool. It, it's a pretty fucking spiffy, fancy, blinged out looking, um, you know, parrying dagger, mangosh kind of thing. But I want it. This cow's getting loose, we have to kill it. Are we leveling up? That's right. Oh, it's cow time. Thank you, Junebug Butch, for that resub. Much appreciated. Alright. Now the challenge is, can I watch my health and make sure I don't die while also reading? Ah, uh, here's hoping. Vesta's Blighted Longsword and its Bounty Hunter counterpart can now be used in the Clan Wars free-for-all arena. They could already be used in Clan Wars challenge battles, if enabled in the battle's options. First cow. First cow down. Crack the Clue 3. The board outside the mysterious old man's house in Falador will be updated today with the names of the winner and step solvers. 
I know they mean the people that solved the steps, but that reads like, you know, like stepbrother, step sibling, step solver. <laughs> My parents married into a new relationship and now I've got a step solver. Cow 2. We're on to cow 3. You can make your armor transgender in this one? No, but you can get, like, pride sweater and flower crown and, like, cute little scarf. Not quite the same, but it's fun colors you can wear. I'm doing fighting, so I'm in armor. Uh, for people that don't know, Crack the Clue is a thing they do every now and then, where, like, they have, like, a bunch of, like, puzzly, challenging clues for you to, like, solve as a community, and you get, like, some fun cosmetic rewards for it, and, like, I believe they keep them in the game, like, more or less indefinitely, so, like, even if you're months late to whatever new one is added, you can just, you know, follow along and try and solve it yourself, or just do a walkthrough and get the, the funny outfit. It's neat. I've never looked into it myself, but, you know, I like puzzles. I support puzzles. You'll love to see it. RuneFest Survey. We'd like to work with you on what the next RuneFest should be. Merch updates. Relive past fights against iconic bosses with this limited edition Top Trumps pack. RuneScape The Gift of Guffix is the first of three planned new novels from Titan Buzz. There's RuneScape novels? Huh. Yeah, if I remember right, most if not all the Crack the Clue stuff... Oh, okay, I'm getting drafted. Hang on. Uh, sir, yes, sir. Alright, let's see. Okay, so we need to do sit-ups. I can re-chat a little bit better when I do this. Puzzles is my wife? Kinda. Star jumps. I can't enable sprint in here. I can't run and do these. I had no idea that they were doing, um, RuneScape novels. That's interesting. I wonder if they're... any good, question mark, because frankly when I think of, um... When I think of, like, video game tie-in novels, I think of the shitty Warcraft ones! <laughs> I don't think they were particularly good. But I mean, they have them. RuneScape has patch notes? Why... Why wouldn't it have patch notes? It's a, it's a video game that gets actively updated and changed. They're, 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 people are gonna want to know what's being added and changed to it. We got a camo shirt, by the way. With the sexy camo midriff. Dude, Malrat is back. Malrat is back. But yeah, why wouldn't they have patch notes? You thought RuneScape stopped? Why? <laughs> Why do you think that? One more cow. Your fault? The way you're wording that makes it sound like you're worried that you made RuneScape fail as like a video game or a business or something. <laughs> Anyways, uh, pre-order books. You can get them if you want, I suppose. Yeah, I think you have a justice. Let's go. I do always feel very flattered anytime anyone's like, yeah, I start saying new fucked up words because of you. I smile and I clap my hands. General Grardor and Sandwich Lady will be taken to the battlefield to face off against the gods of Smite? They're doing another fucking Smite crossover? Okay! Sure, man, whatever. <laughs> you can't call it anything but a toiler anymore? I have been calling it the Toilerit Boil for like fucking months to years now, and I can't stop. PvP Rota. The PvP Rota has moved to period A. 
World 535 in the US is a PvP world. 318 in the UK is a bounty hunter world. 548 in Germany is a high-risk PvP world. 577 in the US is a free-to-play PvP world. And 599 in the UK is like my status competitive. That's a... That's, that's a joke, I tell you. It's, it's last man standing. Pick up these bones. Uh, at the moment, I care more about the cowhide than anything else, so I'll grab that. And now we go back to the, ba to the bank. And put our stuff away. And then we go back to it. I'll put other stuff away, too, so I have more room for cow bets. World 390 in Australia, for Last Man Standing Competitive, has been activated with this rota. Thank you, Shadow Muffin, for that 33-month reset. Much appreciated. Hey, hell yeah. I hope you enjoy them. I like to think they're a nice, chill, podcast-ass stream type of time. I hope you enjoy them. And thank you for the reset. Uh, World 569, Australia, for Bounty Hunter, has been activated with this rota. The PvP arena is using Zerker loadouts in ranked duels and tournaments this week. There, there's a bunch of fun little, like, community nomenclature for, uh, different types of, like, account builds specifically for, uh, like, PvP and stuff, which I always think was charming. Just like, yeah, we came up with the names for this stuff. I think Zerker builds specifically are like, um, you basically don't level attack, you put all your fucking points into strength, I gotta hide my... my bank pin. Where is... Are you sure? You can- I'll hide it with 2024's first meme. Um... But yeah, people come up with a bunch of, like, funny different names for, like, types of accounts that you can put together specifically for fighting other people. Okay, well, that's 2023's uh, first meme. Let's put all this stuff away. There we go. Deposit all. Deposit all cow high. Deposit all raw meat. Alright. And we can certainly get some cooking levels off that beef later. Next time you go to your bank, can we see spam? I don't remember what fucking source spam is, is the problem. Otherwise, I would have just done it. Uh, like, like, this is Goose. Uh, this is BB. The fuck is this? Oh, right, it's the rules. Try to hurt the wizard every time you see him. Um, here's eels. Here's tits. Uh, here's a really good picture of a dog. Um, this is Final Fantasy XIV patch notes. Uh, and this is Donkey Kong. This is when you were. Well, this is has been. These are my birds. Uh, this source is called Image of a Fork, so I guess I know what that's gonna be. Well, son of a bitch, it's spam. That's not an image of a fork at all! Like... Something's wrong with my fucking OBS. I gotta rename my sources, man. <laughs> something's happening. What's the matter? Anyways. We want to be upfront here. This year's event is largely the same as last year's well-received trick-or-treating community event. Well, I never played last year, so I can't complain. <laughs> We know that's going to disappoint a lot of you who look forward to these small slices of silly seasonal spookiness. The reason is simple. Varlamore is shaping up to be Old School's biggest launch to date, and with Leagues 4 on the horizon, plus other upcoming QOL changes to, con to content like the Chambers of Zarek, we've made the decision to prioritize development of these bigger projects. I think that's a, a smart move, frankly. Love how you and Wayne both never delete your old sources. Here's the thing, though. I do delete a lot of my old sources. I just also keep a lot around because I like being able to hit the button and make Donkey Kong appear. You know? <laughs> there, are, there are literally so many that I have in fact deleted. Let's see. 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Whilst you'll be replaying last year's event, we hope you understand our reasoning, even if you may disagree with the decision. No, I think it was a smart choice. And we hope that you'll appreciate the tweaks to the community goal and enjoy the new cosmetic rewards. Yeah, yeah man, I love free shit. I'll play any free shit. I love it. It's Halloween, baby. Uh, rest assured, our long-term plan is to continue with the short story-driven holiday events that are so core to old school. That said, we'd like your thoughts on how we approach this year's Christmas event. We were considering rerunning 2013's Christmas event, which is a much older event itself from 2006. Huh. That could be fun, I think. I like the idea of bringing back old one, old ones. We're conscious that many of you won't have played this event before, or at least not for many, many years, way back in RuneScape 2. We think you'll enjoy the nostalgia trip. Alongside that, we're leaning towards having Old School's 11th anniversary event be primarily a community celebration, rather than any in-game content. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts. Uh, I think that's fucking fine, frankly. Uh, I think it would be cool if they did a rerun of, like, the 10th anniversary. Other than that, hey, if, you, if they want to focus on doing other stuff, that's cool. I get it. Halloween 2023. Trick-or-treating is back! But with slightly more spiders. Story of spiders! Once again, we're hearing reports of sweet treats popping out of trees, rocks, and fishing spots all over. All over Gilinor. Well, that's scary. They're not meant to be there. NPCs are getting into the Halloween spirit, too, with treats for the deserving and tricks for the most unfortunate souls. You're gonna get a fucking trick and you'll fucking hate it. So look forward to it. That's awesome, Combo Winter. I never had the chance to do the anniversary thing, so I ain't got any of those funny things. Much like our last Halloween event, you'll be working as one spooky collective to gather all the treats possible and filling up the community cauldron. However, the targets should be easier to reach this time. Let's get this cauldron overflowing! Dude, this party's gonna be absolutely fucking crazy. I'm gonna get fucking kitty on green meanie beanie candies. While most of the action takes place in and around Varrock, you'll also find a few chatty NPCs further afield that are definitely worth interacting with. Who might be likely candidates for seasonal treats? Perhaps it's time to visit your elders. We've also got some brand new rewards for you this year, so bring your best scary face and a handful of tricks to snag yourself some wicked cosmetic treats. Th this event, as a typo in the patch notes, get their ass. This event has no prerequisites, so everyone can join in the celebration of the spookiest of seasons. We'll see you there. Other changes. After reviewing the Bond Pouch interface, we've given it a little redesign, making it smoother to use when moving and purchasing bonds for your journey across Gilinor. The Bond Pouch interface is still accessed through the account management menu. So for people that don't know, bonds are, um, they're an item you can use and redeem for, like, membership sometime. You can also, like, sell them on the marketplace for, like, in-game money, and thus you can buy membership time with gold. Uh, if you, you know, have enough of it. Hey, we reached a total level of 200. The number go up. Which, uh, I think that's an interesting system. Um, a bond is like, you know, two weeks a member or something like that. Can you do that on an Iron Man? Yes, very specifically. The only thing that Iron Men can do in the Grand Exchange is buy bonds. It is the one thing you're allowed to use the GE for, which is cute. Uh, they can be a little bit pricey in terms of, like, how much, you know, in-game money they cost. So it's not like a, yes, you can very easily do this at the start of your account, especially if you are an Iron Man, but, like... It's a neat way for free-to-play players to be able to experience, uh, more that the game has to offer. And also, you can just, like, freely give them out to people if you want. Like, you can buy a bond and then just trade it with someone kind of thing. I don't know if you can trade it with, um, an Iron Man. I don't know if you can walk up to an Iron Man and just be like, hey, here's some bond time for you kind of thing. Can an Iron Man even earn enough in two weeks? You'd be surprised. 
you, you'd be surprised what people are out here doing in this video game. Here's a list of the changes we've made. More accessible buttons for depositing and withdrawing multiple bonds. Highlights on the number of bonds in your inventory and bank. Additional warnings for iron players. That's me, I'm an iron player. I don't I don't mind tossing them like real money though, so I just buy subtime personally. I figure I get enough joy out of this game, I don't mind tossing them a couple bones every now and then. Anyways, text and readability improvements. And we've got a few more tweaks this week too. Using a new option in the settings menu, you can now select whether compass options like look north should affect the vertical angle of the camera when used. Uh, Camfrina and Lorelei now recognize Trim Rune Defenders when discussing the Cyclops runes. A lot of members' methods make a ton of money, so if they're dedicated members, they'll just grind out two bonds in a week's time. Yeah! Like, if, if, if you're up and at him doing the, like, type of stuff in the game you want to be doing on the regular anyways as, like, you know, a normal account because you're trying to make, uh, Grand Exchange money, or on you know, an iron account because you're trying to get the drop. Like, you're you're getting money. You're getting decent money out of it anyways. So, like, you'll probably be okay as long as you were able to, you know, play regularly enough in a two-week period and get some content done kind of thing. You're killing ammonite crabs on Fossil Island. I still gotta fucking unlock Fossil Island. I've never done anything there. We could straight up go to the Varrock Museum and, like, you know, get some kudos today. But I'm also reading patch notes, so that might be a different stream. M mostly today I was just gonna kill cows. I need to level up crafting for uh, a clue scroll. Need to make some fucking chaps. Is Iron Man a time limit as well? No, we're talking about bonds. One bond is two weeks of membership. So if you want to continue buying bonds to keep having membership time and not pay real money on this video game, you gotta do things in the video game to make money, which means you gotta do the content. The content being basically anything you want to do past a certain point of progression can be decently profitable in terms of the gold you make. Do a few quests and answer Orlando Smith's crazy quiz. Awesome. I've always been curious about Fossil Island. I know there's, like, um... They got fucking mushrooms you can chop down instead of, like, trees. And then there's, like, um... There's the, the herbivore for Hunter. And there's... See, I don't even have to hunt this imp anymore. Because we did that quest, and also I have, um... I have the mind talisman that the imps drop. I don't, I don't gotta go after imps anymore. I'm free. Anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, this, this seems like there's a lot of cool content on Fossil Island. I'll get it someday. I, I, I like the, the bird house stuff, and I like the, uh... The, the, the... The look of the, like, volcano mining thing, whatever that is. That seems cool. Cool stuff there. I'll check it out someday when I get it unlocked. Anyways. I'm reading this. Uh, Rune Defenders. I've never been able to get a defender just because I haven't done a lot of combat stuff in previous member accounts. Since my my sort of loose goal for this account is I want to do all the quests. I guess I'll eventually unlock the area in which you get defenders and then I'll try to grind one out. By one I mean, you know, a dragon one. <laughs> I, I like the idea of it just being like, yeah, you got like a parrying dagger in your other hand. It's fun. That's fun to me. I was talking about this earlier in the stream, but I have lofty, lofty dreams of getting the, uh... Wh whichever defender it is that you, like, upgrade from a dragon one from... I want to say it's the vampire raid? The Avernic defender, yeah. And then getting the, the, the high-level combat diary hilt to put on that. It looks stylish as fuck. I'm not normally super into the, like, you know, blinged out uh, equipment like that, but I like the way it looks. I want to do the raids in general someday, but, you know, we'll get there if we get there. I don't know necessarily how well I'd be able to do in a, a RuneScape raid with my internet being the way it is sometimes. But they look fun, so I, I want to try. 
Vesta's Blighted Longsword and its Bounty Hunter counterpart can now be used in the Clan Wars free-for-all arena. It can already be used in the Clan Wars challenge battles if enabled in the battle's options. Neat. Crack the co- clack, clack the- Kark the- Clunk- Clunky Dunk 3. It's been a while since Crack the Clue 3 wrapped up, but we wanted to take a moment to congratulate the winner, and all those who participated in Wook's Puzzling Challenge. The board inside the mysterious old man's house in Falador will be updated today with all the names. We'd like to give a quick shout out to Saw Dude for helping us confirm the individuals involved. Saw Dude! <laughs> Winner! Spider 1357, Story of Spiders. Step Solvers. Wend Yes. Uh. DDD Vlot. Spider 1357. Detail. Kissin? Good name, good name, good name, Kissin. Uh. Yuapo Keke? Zaig? Oh, that's just straight up, um. An Organization 13 member. One Frosty Sob. God's life! <laughs> this dude is God's idea. Uh. Winter Prophet, Ruru Rupert. Mr. Man or Mr. E Man 22. I love you, by the way. Oh, I love you too. Belt. Uh, Agent Yolo. Kexa. That's another Organization 13 member. Fleur de Lis. Uh, Loli Fe. And Musa Uko. And finally, a huge shout out to the fantastic Crack the Clue Discord. It was truly brilliant how you came together to solve all the steps. Runefest Survey. Runefest represents the pinnacle of our great community and we missed it dearly. Oh yeah, that's true, they do a they do a, a, a convention type of thing, don't they? We've got a short survey that we'd love for you to complete to help us guide our efforts in making it return it's making its return as special as we can. I I don't I'm not reading that. You can look at look at it yourself if you're interested, I guess. I gotta get cows. I gotta get cows and raw beef. Not even after the raw beef. I want the hides mostly, but the beef is good to have for cooking as well. Merch update. Top trumps. Like a card game or something? Relive past fights against iconic bosses with this limited edition Top Trumps pack. Currently exclusive to the RuneScape merch store for pre-order. Uh, and shipping the 24th of November this year, OSRS Boss Top Trumps come in a premium travel case and features 30 powerful bosses from across the history of the game. Kexa is the nobody of rice wine. Awesome. <laughs> Take a nostalgia trip with classic RuneScape baddies like the Calphite Queen, Giant Mole, and the notorious KBD, or battle unique old school clothes such as Vorkap and Zulra. Is Calphite Queen really that old? I thought Calphite Queen was like a recent-ish edition, as in like, you know, within the last couple of years. I had no idea Calphite Queen was like an old-ass RuneScape thing. That's neat. Giant Mole's kind of a baddie, though. <sighs> okay. Whatever you say. Calphite Queen is 20 next year. What the fuck? I thought Calphite Queen was recent. What the hell? That's wild. Uh, relive the dungeons of the Temple of Lost Ancients with all the God War generals, or deploy formidable foes from across 10 years of old school, including quest, wilderness, and slayer bosses like Zuck, Jad, Cerberus, Elvarg, and Galvec. I know some of those names. <laughs> I recognize some of these. Some of these are sounds to me, but I recognize some of them. She's a mom, she has to be one. <sighs> I guess. <laughs> Who knows, you might even pick up a wild card. Look out for the evil chicken and other surprise appearances. You might get an ultra deluxe rare hollow foil chicken card. And that's awesome. No, don't go that way. Come on. Oh, no, it's fine. Never mind. 
How do you play? It's easy. Choose a category on each card, such as combat level, max hit, boss kills, height, or year added to game. Whatever you think is the winning stat that will outdo your opponent. Draw on your knowledge of old school RuneScape to figure out if the evil chicken really can beat Kirill by virtue of having been in the game longest. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. So the whole game is like, okay, uh, how, wh what number is bigger in these various different categories? That's cute. That's cute. Does Callisto have more boss kills than Grardor? Who is taller than whom? Do you know whose combat level makes them the most difficult to beat and who outhits all the rest? It's like a little quiz game, okay. Featuring art created using the old school in-game models. I should cook my beef. And a short description of each character that you can use to quiz your opponent's lore knowledge. This deck gives you a fun new way to, make, to take on friends and family with foes old and new. Reorder in the merch store to avoid missing out. Top Trump is popular in Europe? I mean, that makes sense. This is a UK video game. Wait, you will be making stew today. No, uh, I'm going to be reading the morning paper and giving everyone the update, giving everyone the news on patch notes. No, no, no stew happening today. <laughs> My plan was to do a long ass stream where I do something else while playing RuneScape. Coincidentally, someone sent me a message on Tumblr saying they had a dream where I was playing RuneScape and streaming it while also doing some other long ass thing. <laughs> Top Trumps is sports trivia? That's fucking awesome. Also, thank you, Unknown Neo, for the resub. I appreciate it. That was you? Ah. Awesome. <laughs> I don't remember names. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a damn beef. Yum, yum, yum. Pause it. All the rest. I think I need a fucking burnt meat for a quest at some point. So I'm gonna deposit those. And if I don't need them, then I can take them out of my damn bank. New novels! Alright. Fucking books, man. They're making RuneScape books. RuneScape The Gift of Guthics, the first of three planned new novels from Titan Books, uh, will be published May 2024, and it's now available for pre-order. Huh. Let your bag get that nice, nice, rotten, burnt meat smell. No, 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 no. It's not my bag. It's like my safety deposit box. Where they put like, you know, my money and like things I want to keep safe. It's going to have that rot smell. It's going to have that meat smell. Hello, bed sores. Sorry you had to come in when I was talking about awful fucking meat. <laughs> but welcome to the stream. <laughs> Thanks for stopping on by. Your streams are cool. The delicious cooked beef looses the reaper's grip upon your soul, as it does, as it does. Most of life is awful meat. Ah, a good percentage of it. A decent chunk of it. You know how it is. As Garnia's fate hangs in the balance, disparate tribes unite under the banner of Lord Radolin and his enemies look on in fear and hatred. Radolin's advisors, an uneasy alliance of black and white knights, whisper of a discovery in the north that will give them the power to change ev- Dude, they're gonna change everything? No, I like it when stuff is the same, though! That's fucked. What am I grinding for? I need cowhides to do some crafting. Um... And I figure this is an easy AFK way to level up my fighting while I can also, you know, read patch notes. Doing multiple things. Caught in the midst of history, a lowly scribe and the son of a Jarl hold the fate of Radolin's new kingdom in their hands. From the glorious inauguration of King Radolin's reign to the disgraceful expulsion of the Zag Zamorakians from Asgarnia, the Gift of Guthix tells an epic tale of the origin of magic, the plight of civil war, and the crushing defeat of the Fremenic Great Invasion. Amongst plots and betrayals, uh, a penitent turncoat waits for her moment to leap in into the unknown. The novel will be penned by Eric M. Evans, the author of seven Forgotten Realms novels for Wizards of the Coast. Huh. Right, they do fucking novels for those too, don't they? Yo, I think a crab lit crap crap crab crab ha Help! <laughs> Thank you, Crab Nebular, for the six month resub. I'm sorry I struggled so much on that. Hope you're doing well. Once had someone you were living with 
put foil on a baking sheet that someone else had already used and then put it back when they were done, foil still on. The stuff caught under the foil turned into pure rot. Mmm, that's why you gotta clean those things. That's why you gotta clean those things. Had to leave it outside for a week before it could be cleaned because of the smell. Awesome. Awesome. You love to see it. Or don't. Depends. Uh, but huh, it's, it's interesting that they're panning RuneScape books now. I have no idea what any of the Forgotten Realms books are like. <laughs> because I tend not to read uh, video game or game related books because I feel like a lot of them in my experience are kind of bad. At least the ones that I ended up checking out. There was like a period in high school where I was like, yeah, you know, I'll check out, like, Warcraft books and, and, uh, Warhammer 40k books, and they weren't good. And so I was kind of like, uh, I'd rather just read other types of books, actually. One of the RuneScape books wove in the Falador Massacre in there? Wild. Found a dog in costume. Awesome. I have not looked at any of the, the Halloween stuff yet. Uh, including 2011 Scribe Award winner Brimstone Angels. You can order the book if you want to. Smite collaboration! <laughs> this is maybe one of the meanest things I'm gonna say today. Who the fuck is out here playing Smite? <laughs> You just might, you can check it out. You can play as the fucking sandwich lady. That's kind of fucking funny. That's pretty goddamn funny, actually. Uh, the PvP world rota again. My strength is strengther. You can also discuss this update on our official forums, on the 2007 Scape subreddit, on the Steam forums, or the community-led OSRS Discord in the game update channel. For more info on the above content, check out the official old school wiki. And then all the mods sign off. All right. Patch notes number one. Complete. Combat level 16. Attained. You know what that means? That's right. Splatoon 3 patch notes. Here's... Because for some reason they keep it on the how to update Splatoon 3 page, which I always thought was funny. Latest update. Version 5.1.0, released October 17th, 2023. Changes to Splatfests. Data relating to the Splatween fat, fat Splast? Health. Splatfest has been added. Changes to multiplayer. The terrain in Mahi Mahi Resort has been changed in all modes. I have not at all looked into what um, the Mahi changes are. Uh, from, like, the little thumbnail teaser image they showed, it sounded like they were, you know, giving alternate routes out of your, your spawn area and stuff. So that's good. Hey, thanks for the tip. Splatter Towing. Meet Marcel Towing. Proud owner of restaurant Splatter Towing. Chef Towing knows the secret to any great squid. The freshest ingredients. The freshest towing. Splatatoing. Yeah, I've got to look at what the, the Mahi changes are in detail. Um, hey, updating Mahi is good. That map definitely needed uh, some stuff. There's quite a few maps that need a little bit of extra something-something to prevent them from being quite so choke-pointy. That's a goblin. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what they changed. Specifications for some main weapons have changed. Splattershot Jr. and Custom Splattershot Jr. Movement speed while firing is now 6% faster! 6% <laughs> is not a lot. Uh, juniors have kind of fallen off a little bit. Oh, I'll take body rune, sure. So uh, them getting a little bit, of, little bit of extra is pretty nice. 6% is not a lot. And a lot of these changes are relatively small number changes that still end up feeling anywhere from substantial to, well, that's nice, I guess. But, uh, hey, more strafe speed means maybe they'll be able to 
duck and weave in and out of combat a little better. It also means it's going to be able to paint faster, which means you'll be able to get your special better, which means you'll be able to get bubbler better. Um, a big thing in... Is Splatoon also doing a big QRL update today? No, this was a couple of days ago. I think literally yesterday, technically. Already happened. But, uh, yeah, they're, they, they, they do, like, their big, like, seasonal patch when the new season drops. And they do a mid-season patch with more, like, balance changes specifically, usually. But, uh, a, a big thing right now, uh, in, like, the metagame of Splatoon 3 is... Um, Trizuka is really, really fucking strong. Uh, and so it's, like, kind of dominant. Uh, it's, it's not, like, in a really deeply unhealthy way for the video game that, like, missiles being strong at the end of Splatoon 2 or crab being strong at the start of Splatoon 3 was, but they're still really fucking dominant. Uh, and need, 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 need some, need some toning down. Uh, which I think they do do to some degree in this patch. No, not deposit X, deposit all. No, no, no. Go back to the bank. Come on, girl, what are you doing? Hey, thank you, Serenine, for the two months. Much appreciated. So, um... The fact that they're, like, slightly encouraging, um... Weapons with Big Bubbler to do a little better, because, like, some people are very much like, yeah, you know... Big Bubbler is good in that it can help uh, stop and stall out uh, Trizuka. You can put up a shield and then it blocks the shots and stuff, but then you gotta go like, okay, well, is it worth dedicating an entire weapon slot to uh, a weapon that's probably gonna be a little bit on the weaker side that runs Bubbler just for the sake of countering uh, one Zuka? So, I, so they're trying to make the Zuka weapons, you know. Not the Zuka weapons, the bubbler weapons. Feel at least a little bit better in some way or another. So, uh, hey, neat. L3 nozzle nose, L3 nozzle nose D, H3 nozzle nose, and H3 nozzle nose D. The reduction in damage based on how long a shot takes to reach its target is now more gradual. That is damage fall off. That is damage fall off. That is, um, the maximum and minimum damage ranges are probably still the same, but, like, you have a better effective range in that there are more ranges where you can get higher damage hits. But, like, the way I've seen people talk about the Nozzle Nose is, is A, they're, they're kind of weapons where you really do just want to be in the max damage-ish range anyways, and B, they're not really seeing a ton of use, and I don't know if a fall-off buff is going to help with that necessarily. But hey, it's something. S-Blast 92. Uh, this is cool, because the S-Blast is a, a neat weapon. That, uh, I am glad to see getting better. Reduce the amount of ink consumed by approximately 15%. Okay. Nice. Prayer 14. Also nice. Raw beef. Also nice. Uh, made mid-jump shot scatter reduction, which brings it closer to scatter levels while shooting on land. From the Intensify Action Gear ability, easier to activate even when a smaller number of gear abilities. That's word salad. You know what that means? When you jump in Splatoon, they add more spread to your shots. When you jump in the video game, your shots have more, like, random spread. Intensify Action is a gear ability when you jump. That gives you less spread, so your shots are more accurate when you're jumping. Uh, specifically, what this is, is, uh, the maximum amount of intensify action still gives the same buff as it used to, but having fewer points in that on your gear, uh, at, like, the lowest end of things now gives more of a benefit, so you can invest less in it and invest more in other things on your gear, and still get, you know, good benefit, because the, the whole thing with S-Class specifically is it's got two modes, it's got two modes of fire, one when you're, like, you know, standing still and shooting or moving and shooting and one when you're jumping and shooting and they both do different things and so having the jump and shoot you know be better with fewer investment with lower investment i should say uh yeah that's pretty good you like to see that you made mac and cheese with hot dogs for you and your child fuck yeah i i do have a soft spot for box macaroni and cheese cut up some fucking hot dogs in there that's some good stuff. 
That's fucking classic. Uh, carbon roller, carbon roller deco, splat roller, and crack on splat roller. Widen the angle at which horizontal swings deal maximum damage. Uh, I think that's less, like, range in front of you and more, like, range kind of to the side of you because, you know, you're, you're swinging a big wide thing. It's got a big wide hitbox. Um... And so they're making that, you know, a little wider so it's easier to hit people not like, directly in front of you when you're doing the uh, the standing flick. That's neat. Um, giving it to Carbon Roller is spicy. Because Carbon Roller is very strong right now. Um, it's a difficult playstyle. But if you can, like, you know, get your head around that playstyle and play it well, it's really fucking strong. Uh, so them buffing that is mm, <laughs> yummy, yummy. Um, and carbon roller, or no, uh, splat, splat roller, sprat, sprat, not sprat roller. That's they're not allowed to have that in that video game. It's a kids game. Splat roller has big bubbler. Another big bubbler weapon is getting a buff. Did they fuck with octobrush? No, no changes to octobrush. I, I've read, already read these patch notes, I know that for a fact. Also, good morning, Gibson. Hope you're doing well today. They did buff Painbrush, but nothing for Octobrush. Uh, but yeah, uh, another another change to a big bubbler weapon, which is interesting. They're they're kind of going like, hey, you guys want to use some big bubbler weapons? You, got, you guys want those bubblers? You guys want a shield to help you deal with, uh, with, with bazookas? Thank you, Paz Tapas, for that resub. Much appreciated. Maybe it's Carbon Gaming for you soon. Uh, specifically, the one that I would recommend trying out is... I think it's the, the Carbon Deco that has the Burst Bomb. Uh, you you get one decent, like, close-range swing on an enemy and you hit him with a Burst Bomb. That's, that's a very quick combo that's just lethal. It just kills. And that's part of why it's so strong, is if you're able to just get in someone's face and, like, you know, get your moves off, they're dead in, like, half a second. Midterms day for you? I'm fucking praying for you, my friend. I hope that shit goes good. I'm so glad I don't have to do midterms no more. <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, neat to see for the rollers. Painbrush. Reduce the amount of time it takes for ink to begin recovering after swinging by about one-sixth of a second. So, knee-deep in data structures? Aw, oh, hell yeah, I know how it is. Or was. That was, uh... Sounds very similar to what I was studying back when I was, uh, in college and stuff. Anyway, so, ink recovery frames. When you use, uh, certain weapons, like main attacks, or when you, you know, use your, your bomb. There's a little bit of time where there's like a little gray section on your ink meter that's like going down and you can't recover ink until that's gone down. Uh, that's your, that's your, you know, your, if you know fighting game terminology, it's your recovery frames. After you do a move, then you gotta, you know, you can't do any other inputs for a while after that. It's your recovery frames. So they made that faster on Painbrush by like a sixth of a second, which is, you know, a couple of frames. Which is, you know, that's good. It's it's a it's a slow, beefy weapon. So it being able to get its ink back a little bit faster after its big committed swings is sounds good. Sounds good for it. The leather and beef in my inventory spells out high. It looks more like it's spelling out. And now it looks more like it's spelling. Not really. <laughs> I don't really see it. I get what you mean, but I don't see it. <laughs> the reduction in damage based on how far a shot travels before hitting an enemy has been adjusted. Again, damage fall off. Damage fall off buff. The weapon can now deal 50 damage and 33.4 damage farther than it did before. So that's a higher effective range. Not actual literal range buff, but the range at which you can do the bigger damage numbers you want to be doing are bigger now, so that's good. 
Mini splat leg and zinc mini splat leg. Reduce the amount of ink consumed by approximately 13%. Again! Hey, you wanna play a fucking big bubbler weapon? Hey, you guys maybe wanna run some big bubbler to help out with all the zookas you've been fighting? <laughs> Sophie! Thank you for the resub! It was nice getting to chat with you again last night. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you slept better. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a fucking pervert every time I play RuneScape. It's gotta be Iron Woman. It's, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's the fun way for me to play. <laughs> you sleep? Fuck yeah. You love to see it. You love to see it. But yeah, uh... You use less ink so you can fight more and you can paint more and you can paint better. So that you can get your super faster. So that you can use your fucking big bubbler to help out with the fucking zookas being blasted at you. I'll deposit my burnt meat. Whatever. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to use some some fucking big shield? You want to use bubble shield? Ooh, th th this one seems pretty fucking big for Hydra. Movement speed while charging is 10% faster, so you got you got better strafing. Increased firing duration by roughly 8%. So they are they are giving more oomph to Hydra's ability to, you know, stay way back and fucking blast on you. And like, you know, fucking swoose out of the way of your shots if you're not close close to them. Um and then you shoot a little bit longer, which means, you know, more more pressure out, more volume of shots going out in front of you. But also means more painting. Which also means more Booyah Bombs. Which is interesting, because, like... Booyah Bomb is a pretty decent uh, special that's not necessarily being, like, built around, but, like, you know, you like having it if it's on your team. Um... There's a serious market for burnt food and OSRS since it can't be traded on the GE. I mean, I can't trade at all. I'm an Iron Woman. <laughs> I'm just keeping it in my bank because it's funny and I know I need it for a couple quests. Anyways, um... The, the one big thing that people were running for Booyah Bomb was Sloshing Machine. And they were mostly running it because it was Sloshing Machine. And it complemented... Like, Sloshing Machine was very good at doing... Basically anything on any team comp. Less so nowadays, after some meta shakeups. But people were mostly running it because Sloshing Machine was really good, and it had uh, Fizzy Bomb, which is really good. Then it also, you know, it had Booyah Bomb, which is not what you're really building for and planning for, but it's good to have, and people liked having it. It's a good, it's a good super. Hydra Splat becoming a little more real means it might be able to put out more Booyah Bombs, which might be... Which might be interesting, might be useful. I'm I'm curious to see specifically what people that play a lot of like splatlings have to say about it. Specifically, because like a, a lot of the time right now, like splatlings in general are in a good place. Uh, especially at the higher end of things. But, like, most of the time, you're probably just going to want to run like a ballpoint. Um and then like most, if not all of the other splatlings, like you're gonna want to run like a ball point, or you're gonna want to run like just a, a normal, uh, heavy splatling. And then most of the other splatlings have like really effective niches that you'll want to pick sometimes. Um, and for the most part, if you're decent, if you're like good at playing like uh, ball point, then you're gonna be pretty good at playing basically any other uh, splatling. So you can kind of pick them out interchangeably as you, as your team comp needs. Um, Hydra Splatling was always a little bit of an outlier just because, like, it wasn't necessarily as impactful as other people wanted for their, like, high-end team comps. But it's got big range and it's got big damage, so if you can make it work, you can make it work. So it's interesting to see it, you know, getting stronger. Just hanging and playing Warframe? Hell yeah. You'll love to see it. You'll love to hear it. We're gonna get to the Warframe patch notes in a bit. Uh, speaking of which, actually... Speaking of in a bit, um, I gotta take a break for a bit. <laughs> so I'm gonna go over here, uh, log out real quick. Uh, I'll get on some music. Thank you, M. Broloon, for that resub. Much appreciated. Um, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna have a stretch. I'm going to make a bowl of carrot soup, but I'm going to have soup to eat. Uh, because I want to eat soup, and I want to have fucking lunch. It's like one o'clock. 
So I'm gonna go do that. <sighs> you should get up and have a stretch yourself because I'm just gonna be playing fucking ads for like three minutes. You don't want to sit at your computer and watch that, do you? <laughs> I still get paid if you're not looking at them, so you can just have a fucking stretch. Your knees will thank you. Your back will thank you. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Just let you know, my soup is almost ready. Sit tight, we'll be back soon. And then I'll have soup.
Shoo, 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 shoo. I am back. I forgot to close my door, so I walked away from my microphone. I got my soup. Uh, it's just a, a thing of carrot soup from a from a local grocery store. They have this brand of uh. They, they, they do, like, vegetarian and vegan soups and stews and chilies and stuff. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, but even, like, their best selection on a good day needs more seasoning, in my opinion. So I added, uh... I didn't feel like doing too much to it, and I didn't feel like, you know, getting out a fucking cutting board or anything while I was, uh... on a fucking stream break. I didn't think to do any this morning, so it was mostly just, like, um... a little bit extra salt... A lot of black pepper, uh, a little bit of a little bit of chili pepper, and some. Uh, I put some some cheddar in there. I think cheddar goes good with a, a carrot soup. Then I take a bite. By a bite, I guess I mean a slurp. It's good. It's good. Definitely better now that I plussed it up a bit. Mm. This fucking cheese is so weird. Like, it tastes good, don't get me wrong. It's good cheese, but like, all over the bag, it's like, oh yeah, this is our, um... I don't remember exactly what they call it, but they keep insisting, like, yeah, this is our natural cheese. And every single instance of the word natural, there's a big asterisk next to it. And it's like, yeah, I, I get it. Like, when you actually look at what the asterisk is, it's a little thing going, hey, go on our website to see exactly what we mean by this. So like, yeah, sure, you're pointing to a direction where I can go, hey, what does that mean? But also, hey, selling me your product and going, this is our natural product with a giant fucking asterisk next to natural, you know? <laughs> I feel like the bells start ringing a little bit, like, hmm, warning, something's up. <laughs> is that just me? <laughs> is that just me or <sighs> soup mm. probably a bad idea to try and play while eating soup but I can certainly read some more patch notes I think trying to juggle also playing a game while souping and reading would uh, be a disaster but I can do this at the very least Let's read some more, some more Splatoon patch notes. Glugadoolies. The reduction in damage, but yada yada yada, it's a damage falloff thing. <laughs> Gluga my fucking doolies. I don't really hear or see many people talk about Glugadoolies in like the comp scene. So I don't know who's using it, <laughs> if anyone. But like, Luca Dooley's fill kind of a similar niche to like, uh, the Fifty Two Gal and the Squeezer to some extent. Given that it's like, yeah, this is a weapon with decent range and a wall that you can put down a fight with. And like, what you want to do with the Glugas specifically is like put down your wall to fight from behind and then, you know, do a roll to give yourself the better shooting. Um, or, like, you know, roll away to reposition better around the wall. And then you play kind of like a turret kind of thing. Like you do with the other similar weapons, aside from the squeezer, which is a much more... much more mobile affair, given that weapon's whole fucking deal. Hmm. Soup. Not a lot of people run Gluga. What does Gluga even fucking have as, like, um... That's like a special. I don't remember. Let me look this up. Gluga Dooley's. Greetings. Good afternoon. Soup. Yo, thank you, Amy Isson, for the 29 months. Much appreciated. Thank you as well to Satori Seder. I believe that was when I went up for my break. Thank you for that resub as well. It's a Booyah Bomb. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. They're, they're making more Booyah Bomb options better. Because I guess they want to see if people will run more Booyah. Interesting. Interesting. I suppose you could arg also argue something like a Booyah bomb 
you throw that down at someone trying to, like, you know, hit you with a Zuka. It's going to displace them, it's going to make it harder for them to see, kind of thing, so... I don't think it's really a counter, necessarily, to something like, uh... To something like a Zuka, but I mean, hey, they're putting out other options. Alright, everyone, here's the big one! Here's the big one! Specifications for some sub-weapons have changed. Curling Bomb. Reduce the amount of ink consumed when using a standard ink tank from 70 to 65. Three people in the world right now are so happy about this. It's fucking Curling Bomb. <laughs> Curling Bomb still needs a bit of extra spice in, a, in, like, other vectors to make it a much more interesting and valuable choice on a weapon. But, for the, like, two or three weapons that appreciate it as, like, an entirety, like, an entire utility, like, like just as a utility option for, like, throwing this out in front of you, and now you've got an escape route or you've got a path forward, that's great. Because now it means you can get off more than two shots of your main weapon after throwing a curling bomb. Like, yeah, it's huge for a uh, roller. It's great for roller. Um, it's pretty good for, like, maybe arguably heavy edit splatling if you want to, like, reposition better without, like, you know, strafing while charging. You can move pretty goddamn fast while charging, but, like, you know, if you want a quick escape behind you or, like, you... You want to try and swim in. That's good for you there. Um, fucking... <laughs> sploosh matic I guess, who is fucking desperate for anything. <laughs> also appreciates a better option for being able to get in, so... <laughs> Thoughts on Deep Cut's Austin new Halloween costumes? They're... they're fine. They're all right. Uh, they're cute. Big Man's is really fucking good. The others are... They're okay. They're cute. So yeah, it's neat that, like, they're leaning a little bit more into, like, yeah, this is your, uh... Your movement option. You know, yeah! Someone in chat mentions Reflux. This is probably gonna be pretty fucking big for Reflux. Which... Reflux as a weapon is, like, the moment... It gets changed to make uh, killing people easier, or the moment people figure out how to play it better so that it more reliably gets kills. Reflux is going to start coming in in like a big way. Because running it just for the sake of missiles is like. With the way the meta of the game has shifted, with the way that, like, you know, the things you want to be doing in Splatoon 3 at the moment are. You don't really want to have a team slot literally just be for spamming paint and spamming missiles. It does it it it's this is not Splatoon 2. We're not Splatoon 2 anymore. <laughs> that ship has sailed. And like, even then, if you want missiles, you have better options. You have like you have Flings a Roller. Flings a Roller is a very solid weapon. Flings a Roller is a very solid option as like a kind of like mid backline roller that, like, plays, like, a weird charger kind of thing. You have fucking... Isn't it GooTuber that has missiles? GooTuber is a pretty damn good charger right now. Like, you have other options that, like, you know, get a bunch of missiles. And people aren't picking them because people don't necessarily just want a bunch of missiles, you know? Hmm. But, like, the instant people can get really, really good... Oh yeah, also there's fucking Splatana Wiper Deco. Splatana Wiper Deco is great because, A, yeah, it's got the missiles, that's pretty good, that's nice. Like, missiles aren't bad, missiles are good, missiles are strong. Missiles are in a healthy place. But Splatana Wiper is a really fucking good main weapon, and beacons are really fucking useful on a coordinated team. So, like, that's, that's... That's that's part of why you don't see, like, fucking Reflux, basically, ever. Splatana Wiper also paints really good. And also fights really good. <laughs> so... 
There are people out there, I think, that are trying to make reflex work, but the instant people are able to make it work out better, better. Um, that shit's probably coming in. That shit's probably coming in hot. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure it appreciates, you know, less ink on Curling Bomb. I wonder if they're too afraid to, like, make Curling Bomb as, like, you know, a proper damaging option too strong. Because it, there was, like, one point where it was really fucking strong in, um... In 2, right? If I'm remembering right? I don't know if we have any Splatoon 2 old heads in here. In Caves of Cud, you can't trade with people who are on fire now? That's fucked. That's fucked. Game's fucking over. I gotta play more Cud. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Every time I see you specifically, Doc, either play or talk about Cud, I'm like... Oh shit, I gotta check out more Cud. <laughs> Caves of Cut is good, you're right. So, special weapons. Killer Whale 5.1. Increase damage dealt by approximately 17%. They go into the why of all the changes they make to the specials, so we'll we'll, we'll wait for that and before we talk about it. Kraken Royale. Movement speed will not charge, so now roughly 11% faster. Trizuka, reduce the damage dealt by explosions from 60 to 53. <laughs> the one and only Zuka change. Tenta missiles, decrease the radius of the explosion area that deals 30 damage by approximately 15%. We'll talk about those in a sec. Points required for some special weapons have been changed. Arrow Spray RG. What the, which one is Aerospray RG again? Uh, that's the gold one that chucks out Booyah Bomb. Again, they're, they're putting out more Booyah Bomb options here, but like... No one in a competitive setting is fucking picking Aerospray. No one in a competitive setting is fucking picking Aerospray. Because Aerospray as a main weapon struggles to fight. It struggles to fight and it struggles to take and keep ground in front of it. If, if you're out here like, but I like the way Aerospray plays, and I want to play a weapon like that, at a top level, you're probably just picking like a fucking junior. Or, you know, one of the generic everyman shooters like an Enzap or a Splattershot. Because those more or less do what the Aerospray does. But also they have a better chance at fucking... Fighting. <laughs> mm, soup. Soup good. But hey, it gets it special faster. That's that's certainly something for it. T to be fair, out of both of the arrow sprays, the RG is about the only one you would even maybe kind of consider picking, literally just because it has Booyah Bomb. <laughs> Rapid Blaster? That's going down to 190. What does Rapid Blaster have again? What does Rapid Blaster have again? Is that... Is it Killer Whale? No, it's Triple Ink Strike. Okay, interesting. The, the Rapid Blasters are alright. They're, they're in pretty decent spots. Uh, Big Swig. Big Swig going down to 190. Big Swig enjoyers continue to win forever. People that enjoy the Big Swig continue to get nothing but fucking Ws. Which is good, because, you know, the Big Swig needs a little bit of help. <laughs> so, I like the Big Swig. Uh, it struggles outside of, like, a couple of specific niches. It's pretty good in those niches, though, so. I love to see Big Swig get better. Uh, Squeezer Special is going up to 210. So that it's harder to just spam it for Special. Squeezer is, like... I want to say generally agreed to be one of the best, if not the best, weapons in the game right now. On the basis of it's a really, really, really good shooter. And it has a wall, which is good for, you know, taking its own fights and being selfish, but also for helping out his teammates in fights and stuff. And also it has Trizuka, which is the best special in the game right now. The downside of Squeezer is that playing it is going to give you a repetitive strain injury. It is the carpal tunnel gun if you are playing it optimally. Uh, so I, I don't fuck with it. Because <laughs> its whole thing is that, like, 
when you tap the trigger or like hold down the trigger for like the first split second of your shots, you get like higher damage, longer range. And then if you keep holding it down, it's like a shorter range, wider, less accurate scatter. So the optimal way to play is to get into like tap shot kill range and keep tap shotting. And that that's a lot of fucking spamming your, your finger on the trigger and you know, giving yourself an RSI in your damn fingers. Uh, anyways, it, it takes more points for special now, which, yeah, I kind of need a little bit to be slightly less dominant, but also, it wasn't ever really super, super dominant because hand issues. But people that were playing it were doing really good with it. Try Slasher Nouveau. Going to 200 points. That's... That's fair. Um... Tacticooler is in a very good place, but it's also really, really fucking strong. And so having that just be really super cheap and easy and free to get, um, can, you know, be a little bit of an issue when it's like, all right, you have basically infinite uptime on your fucking cooler kind of thing. So making that a little harder to get, yeah, that's fair. Try Nouveau already wasn't, like, necessarily getting super, super fast cooler output, though, just because like, how much a try slosher paints. And I- I- I kind of feel like this is mostly just gonna push people more towards, like, picking an end zap. Which... I don't know, I kind of liked that people were considering more options for the cooler, because, like, high-level competitive, you definitely do want a cooler on your team. You want one, but you want a cooler. That's just kind of how the game goes now. It is- it is- interesting and val valuable and useful support that doesn't feel bad for how you play the video game. Dapple Dooley's Numero Uno? Oh man, fucking Dapple Dooley's poor things. <laughs> Those poor things. No, basically no one at the high end is playing Dapple Dooley's, unfortunately. They're so cute. I love them. Um, <laughs> they, they've fallen off a little. Don't know how you feel about a multiplayer game having a negative where doing the thing physically harms you in actual real life is a matter of game balance. I don't think it's a matter of they did that specifically to harm you on in real life. I think that's just kind of the nature of, hey, here's a semi-auto weapon that you have to keep hitting the fire button to fire. I fucking hate that shit in video games, I'll be honest. I feel like more games need to implement some kind of like, hey, here's an option where you can just hold down the button or press a different button or press two buttons at once. And then this acts as if you had like a fucking turbo function or something. Or maybe just more controllers need a built-in turbo option. Or maybe game devs just need to stop fucking putting mashing in their fucking video games. Hey, speaking of which, Warframe did recently update and add a fucking auto melee thing so you can just hold down the melee button instead of having to mash the melee button. <laughs> we'll get to Warframe patch notes in a bit. I'm still eating soup. I'm almost done my soup, though. Mm. Good soup. They had that in Back for Blood? I think they have that in fucking Destiny. I'm pretty sure they have that in Destiny. Like, you can say what you will about Destiny 2. There's certainly lots of things I would say. They're generally pretty good in the accessibility department. That shit's good. Speaking of shit that's good, my soup's almost done. Mm. I'm just gonna finish it off and then we can get back to clicking on cows. I hope you enjoyed lunch. I did. <laughs> soup complete. This is the theme of soup being complete. Ultra kill does the auto fire thing for every weapon. Let's fucking go. I gotta play that someday. And every day I tell myself, I'm just gonna wait till it's out of early access. And every day I inch a little bit closer to going, what if I just played it now though? <laughs> Good 
YouTube. Your mom is starting to feel the mouse fatigue when playing Minecraft. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I I do also have a little bit of a problem of like when I get really into something, I kind of give my mouse a fucking death grip. Which is not great for the hand. But it's a hard habit to break. <laughs> I try to be more cognizant of it nowadays. I'm gonna stop the music. And we're gonna log into RuneScape again. Anyways, custom dually squelchers. It was a weird pick to give a special nerf. Dually squelchers are good. Like, they're a very strong main weapon, but like, the customs are the one with super chumps. And, like, super chumps are alright. They're not, like, anywhere on the level of, like, fucking... <laughs> fucking Trizuka. <laughs> so it's a little bit... Huh. But that's getting a, a nerf. Hey, fucking speaking of which... Splattershot has not gotten a super nerf. Splattershot has not gotten a points for special nerf. Splattershot is the fucking king of the game right now because it's a very solid main weapon with a very good bomb and also it has <laughs> Trizuka. And that they're, that stayed the same. Which is wild to me. I, I feel like this is kind of a recurring thing in like a bunch of Splatoon 3 patches where I go like, oh yeah, this is good changes they're making. Why didn't they change this or this? I, I do have to wonder if, like... Because, like, it eventually worked out for, um... For Crab Tank, is they kept making other options to deal with Crab Tank better, and then other options that you would want to run, in general, better, so that people ran Crab Tank less, and had an easier time dealing with it, and now it's, you know, Crab Tank is still good and strong, but it's not just, hey, run two or three of these and you win the game anymore. So I do wonder if some of these changes are going to end up, you know making Zuka less prevalent or making it a little better to deal with. But it's interesting they didn't go for a for a special nerf on the on the splatter shot. Especially since it paints very good anyway, so it's gonna be doing that. And also Stamper went to 210, which is I'm a little sad about. Stamper is very strong, Stamper is very good. And they did buff um what's it called? Your Spider-Man ability. They buffed that recently. And it's like, it's it's better now. But it wasn't like, this makes the weapon impossible to fight type of strong, you know? It's interesting that they, they, they chose that specifically. I wonder why. They don't elaborate on these necessarily, but I, I'm always curious to know what the thought process is. Even if it ends up being something like, oh, I don't agree with that. It's still neat. Cows, by the way. Alright, here we go. This update focuses on adding special Splatfest data and making tweaks to multiplayer. We've made it easier to utilize the strength of some main weapons and increase the options for other main weapons that fulfill similar roles. Additionally, we made it easier to battle with main weapons that are paired with curling bombs. There you go. They specifically, the buff is angled at you being able to shoot your weapon after using a curling bomb, which, hey, yeah, that's good. That's needed. It was needed badly. We've also made adjustments to some special weapons. We adjusted the amount of damage the Killer Whale 5.1 deals to compensate for the fact that many players are now used to dodging it. Which, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. It is largely kind of a displacement special at the moment where it's like, yeah, you know, um, if... If it's targeted at you, if it's aimed at you, it's mostly a, okay, you gotta swim around and not be in this one exact spot anymore type of special. So having to go like, hey, yeah, if you do manage to get some pot shots on someone with it, it's gonna hurt more. That's good. That's good. One upside to live services, if the devs stay on top of shit, balancing can be great. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think there have definitely been some moments in Splatoon 3 that have been like, oh man, I wish this thing would change, I hope this was different. But like, they always have, and they've been pretty good in general about like, you know, fixing stuff in the game that is a problem and encouraging other options to be to be valuable and strong, so... 
I, I like the way they've been handling Splatoon 3 overall, update-wise. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm... <coughs> excuse me. I'm not about to get into the fucking rant about when, like, they announced this latest season. And people were... Some people, I should say. Not, like, fucking everyone, but some people online were certainly really weirdly mad and loud about, uh... How they didn't like that they were bringing old rewards back and how it seemed like there was, like, less content or whatever. And it's like... Hang on, I gotta put on, um, spam. And it was like, okay, so you guys weren't here for Splatoon 2, were you? You got into Splatoon 2 after Octo expansion, didn't you? Because this exact thing happened in Splatoon 2, where there was a fucking quote-unquote content drought. I hate that word. I can't stand that word. But you know what I mean when I say that. Uh, where they were working on Octo expansion. And because they were going full steam ahead on Octo Expansion, there wasn't as much, like, updates coming to the main game in terms of, like, new weapons being added, or new clothes being added, and new stages being added, or changes to stages being added, because they were all working on Octo Expansion, and making Octo Expansion, and designing Octo Expansion. And then fucking Octo Expansion came out, and it was a massive fucking hit. And then a bunch of people were like, wow, I'm gonna get into Splatoon 2 now because Octo Expansion looks cool. And then they went back going big on, like, normal updates again for the video game because they were done with Octo Expansion. <laughs> and so now we have Splatoon 3. And it's like, and like, even then, people were like, wow, the fucking content drought. Splatoon 2 is dying. It's going to be over. This DLC isn't going to save it. And you fucking look at what happened after Octo Expansion came out. Anyways, I just find it funny that it's happening again, where they're like, yeah, we're working on Side Order. We're developing Side Order. We're going to put out Side Order as the DLC for the video game. And people are like, oh my god, the content drought. Splatoon is dead. Nintendo isn't listening. Bad game, bad devs. And it's like, I don't know, man. You, you, at a certain point, you kind of have to tell yourself, hey, maybe I should just do something else for a while, you know? <laughs> Quote unquote content drought has never been a problem for me because I go, oh, there's not much being added to the video game right now? Wonderful. I can do other things for a while. You know? <laughs> and then, you know, the whole boiling down games and entertainment and art into fucking content is a whole other miserable slurry I don't want to get into, but that's also a thing. You don't just have to play one video game? Yeah! And, like, I kind of get it to some degree when some of these people are, like, people that have built their careers around playing and talking about and discussing this one video game kind of thing. I get it as someone that, you know, does streaming for a living and works with video games and talking about video games and playing video games and making entertainment related to video games for my career. I understand. But also, man, at a certain point, you just gotta look at yourself and go, maybe I should do something else. Doesn't even necessarily have to be, I should stop streaming or making YouTube videos or whatever. You could just, you know, do that with other things about other things. And yeah, there's definitely gonna be people that fall off and go like, Oh, this isn't the thing I'm interested in watching from you. I'm not gonna, you know, participate in this. That's just kind of how this career goes. That's, that's the nature of it. Games aren't allowed to finish either. Yeah, it's... I do have feelings on that, too. I I think it's fine for a game to go, hey, this is gonna be the end of it. We're gonna stop actively, like, you know, making things for it. Doesn't mean it's fucking dead or whatever. It's still there. You can still play it. Maybe there's gonna be less interest if it's a thing, you know, designed around a lot of people checking it out. Certainly people love hearing, oh, there's a new thing, I'm gonna check out this game now. Like, or check it out again, but like... It's still there. <laughs> you know? Then again, I suppose there's also, you know, an argument to be made for like, yeah, well, they can stop updating a game and it's still there and you can check it out. And then, like, the game gets filled with, like, the Elder Gods that are still playing it, and you get, like, a fucking Tribes Ascend situation. Where it's like, oh, let's try and get people to check out Tribes again, and they log in, and it's like, they can't play, because the 12 people that have been playing this game non-stop, uh, the power gap is so severe. 
that they just pub stomp everyone. Sites like YouTube disincentivize people from di diversifying their work. That's part of why I don't really bother fucking with the whole YouTube game. I am lucky in that I have, you know, I, I have a modest following, a modest interest of people that are interested in what I have to say and what I want to do, rather than specifically me doing any one or other specific thing. Uh, and I'm, you know, able to support myself and pay my bills doing that, which is good. And it's not really as simple as going, well, why don't they just do what I'm doing? Because let's be real, like, to some extent, yeah. The reason that I'm able to do what I do and that I'm in the position that I'm in is because I like to think I'm good at what I do and I'm good at being entertaining. And that people enjoy and appreciate that and it keeps people coming on in and keeps people staying. But also, to some extent, the fact that I'm in this position is because of fucking luck. <laughs> you know? I try to be very cognizant of that. A good niche with a strong community is greater than broad appeal. I think it's certainly what I enjoy more. Uh, I think if I somehow got, like, fucking, uh, four or five digit fewer numbers on the regular, uh, I would be having a fucking panic attack every night about it. That's a nightmare to me. No, thank you. Won the lottery, but you're a pretty great streamer. That's nice of you to say. I certainly like to think so as well. You know, it's a mix of, I think I'm good at what I do. Also, I got very lucky. <laughs> the cow attack animations are very good. Hey, enjoy your meal, Thirsty. F your name is fucking Thirsty for Coom. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> well, enjoy your meal. I wonder what you might be eating today. Smile. the fuck was I talking about? Right, Splatoon 3 patch notes. We, were, we weren't done that yet. <laughs> uh, where are we at? For the Kraken Royale, we made adjustments to give players additional options outside of the charge attack. Okay, so it's less just, okay, the play with Kraken is to hold down the charge button and always be charging and lunging at people. Now you can just move around normal like a lot faster to scoot around and jump at people. So hey, more options is always good, I reckon. Uh, blah, 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 blah. For the Trizuka, we made it more difficult to splat opponents by accident <laughs> while preserving the ability for players to splat opponents by aiming well and firing two consecutive shots. I mean, on the one hand, I think people are still going to be getting kills by accident with, like, how pretty big, like, the shot range is. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and how it's still doing 53 damage. And, you know, you can still just kind of fire two shots blindly, and if you get lucky, someone's gonna get pasted. Like, that's still gonna happen. Hang on, did that just say I can cook short green guys? What the? <laughs> Give me a sec here. What sec? What? Short green guy. I can brew a short green guy now. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. I don't even know what the fucking gnome cooking thing is. I know it's a whole thing. Don't tell me what it is. Part of the fun of this game to me is figuring stuff out on my own. Um, I've been, like, avoiding a wiki whenever I can help it, unless I, like, want to know, like, what drop rates are, basically, or if I get really stuck on a quest. But, uh... Anyways, um... What was I talking about? Right. It's like, on the one hand, I don't know if necessarily changing it from 60 to 53 is going to help with that. On the other hand, what this change does do is it makes it harder, slightly harder, to, like, you know, combo off of someone else getting in a fight and just going, like, okay, someone's landed, like, one or two shots? Okay, I'm just going to chuck a Zooka shot in that general area, and then it's, we win, it's over, kind of thing. Given that it's, you know, doing less damage now, while still preserving its ability to be a two-tap. 
th those like very slight number changes are always very interesting to me because like it seems so small but in practice a lot of the time they end up being huge small numbers games are fun like that Ima. <laughs> love to imagine someone going to a bar and asking for a short green guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> They're like, yeah, we got that. Just one moment. They swing around, like, under the fucking bar table. And they come back up with, like, Player 3 Kirby in the Amazing Mirror. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting damage threshold they're changing it to. Um, and it's going to make just blasting your Zuka slightly less free, which... Yeah, that's good. I reckon that's good. Um given how it is a little bit, uh, tuned way strong right now. Alright, let's see, what else? Uh, for Tenta Missiles, we made adjustments to reduce instances where players still took damage, even if they took measures to evade enemy missiles. Yeah, that's fair, I suppose. That's fair. Uh, we plan on re releasing the next patch around the middle of November to add Deep Cut Amiibo data. And yes, to the people who asked, I saw the, the Deep Cut uh, Amiibo costumes. They're cute. They're cute enough. Um, I am still kind of surprised that they only showed that off now and not like when they originally announced that they were doing Deep Cut Amiibo. They didn't even show off the Deep Cut Amiibo like on that recent Direct around when they announced them. Which was weird, because they talked about other Amiibo. I wonder why they didn't talk about it. Anyways, I, I guess part of why um, they didn't show off the costumes and stuff now was for the sake of, you know, fucking marketing. So they could be like, yeah, well, we'll talk about the costumes closer to launch because the attention span of the internet and the algorithm or whatever is non-existent. And so if you don't talk about something close to when it's happening, people just assume it doesn't exist anymore. That's a whole other thing, I suppose. Marketing makes me fucking break out into hives. It scares the shit out of me. Big Man is too big for the box, though, which is funny. Alright. That's the patch notes. There's some bug fixes. They happened. So you know what it's time for now, right? That's right, baby. It's Warframe patch notes. Abyss of, Abyss of Dagoth. Update 34. Gather around and listen well, Tenno. Grandmother is back with another spine-tingling Nabara's tale to commemorate the spookiness of the season. Build and enter the new Dagoth's hollow dojo room to learn the sullen and tragic backstory of the faceless horse rider who stalks the origin system in search of retribution. The terrifying 54th Warframe, Dagoth. Uh, to anyone who is part of my Warframe clan, I logged in this morning and added the new dojo room, so you can just- I rushed completion, it's ready, you can just go in there and get the blueprints for Dagon now. You, you, you can get in on that. You can get that shit going. But it's for you and it's for free. So check it out if you want. A doomed Abyssal Zone exterminate mission calls for Tenno aid aboard a drifting galleon. Answer the cry for help and be rewarded for your efforts. Rewards for completing the mission are used to craft Dagoth and her signature weapon, Doorclav. Thank you, Finn the Bin, for the two-month reset. Much appreciated. Thank you for enjoying Short Green Guy. I I do love that she's a Dullahan woman. I think that's very fun, uh, theming and framing. I like a, I like a headless horse rider. Need to go back to resume your interior design activities? Hell yeah. Should we get back into Warframe? I think it's a good time to get back into it. There's been a number of, like, neat uh, quality of life changes recently. I'm doing four damage a swing on these cows now. Nice. You do love to see it. Damn. I remember the day when I thought, like, doing two damage in RuneScape was a huge deal to me. That's awesome. Anyways, uh... <clears throat> Cool stuff in, 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 in Warframe has been changed and updated and stuff. And also, Grendel Prime Access is here. Feast your eyes and gain instant access to Grendel Prime, Massive Prime, Psylocke Prime, and his Prime accessories. Thank you for the tip and message of Slayer. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, it is Big Boy Autumn. Get you one. Fat Boy Fall is here. Let's all celebrate. 
We love to see it. Flawed mods are over party. Etc. Etc. Dogs don't die no more. Coincidentally, stop playing after the Wukong nerf. Yeah, I, I, I know. Especially like, the way you like playing video games and stuff. It wasn't necessarily related to that, but it is funny that it kind of happened around then. He, here's the funny thing. Wu, Wu, Wukong definitely needed the nerf. Wukong is still really, really fucking strong. <laughs> Wu, Handsome Monkey King is still really goddamn good uh, below heaven and above earth, no matter what. So, hey, you can still pick him back up. And Funny Monkey will have a great time. He's still got his energy pussy, it's true. His whole thing is out there. This update also features heaps of quality of life changes, improvements, and more, covering a wide array of content, including the Hydroid rework, Companion rework, new player path improvements, accessibility and HUD improvements, and much more. I might kind of skim through some of these, because I did do an entire stream dedicated to just reading the dev workshops where they covered a lot of this. I'll skim through and see if, like, any placeholder stuff was changed in any sort of way. But, like, for the most part, this is like, yeah, we had a stream of some of this. <laughs> we, we've seen some of this already. Cow, cow, cow. Alright, so. Blah, 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 blah. As announced in DevStream 173, cross-platform cr cross play clans will also be launching in the near future, now that Abyss of Dagoth is live. A dedicated thread will be posted on launch with all the details. That, I think, means if you play on console, not on PC, you can join the clan. You can join uh, the Hollowtones clan, which is kind of an unofficial RTVS clan, but also I think of all the... All, all of us that, like, do stream, I'm, like, the one that's the most Warframe-brained, so I just made it myself and named it after me, but, like, you, anyone could fucking join it if you're in the community. I I consider mostly watching my friends' streams and not really mine still being in the community, so, like, yeah, you know, your, 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 your friends can ask for a fucking invite or whatever. I do need to look into setting up a clan emblem, I do. Wish you could join more than one clan? That would be neat. That would be cool if you could, like, hang out with other folks and talk with other folks and stuff. It is the nature of things. Alright, let's see. Uh, Abyss, of Abyss of Dagoth is a mainline update, meaning that everything the team has been working on since the launch of Echoes of Duviri uh, is in this update, with the obvious section of content that is not ready to be released. Uh, so, the stuff they showed off at Tenocon related to, like, what? Whispers in the Walls? That's not in this. The stuff they showed off Tenocon for Warframe 1999? That's not in this. Whispers in the Walls is aimed at end of the year. 1999 is end at question mark 2024. <laughs> That's what alliances are for? Yeah, but then you have to manually add a bunch of random clans to be in a thing together, and it's like... If I don't fucking know who this clan is, I'm not signing up for a thing with them. An ESO, you could be in, like, five guilds at once. Yeah, like, stuff like that is fun. I know, like, in old school RuneScape, you can, like, be in a clan and then also in, like, a couple different chat rooms or something like that. Like, stuff like that's good. Stuff like that's good. I don't understand why more games don't try and do that from the start kind of thing. Uh, it is very likely, as it is with all mainline updates, that things slip through the cracks, so we will be watching for bug reports and feedbacks in the dedicated Abyss of Dagon subforums to address and follow up hotfixes. They were talking about, um, they, cause Reb, Reb Ford, the current, like, director of Warframe, did, like, a stream before the update dropped, just talking about, like, hey, here's some stuff that's gonna come out in it, here's some, uh, things we know about that we're gonna be addressing already, kind of stuff. Yeah, we're blowing up these cows real fast now, it's good. Um... And I think they said there's already, like, a couple hotfixes planned, like, before the update was even out, just for, like, some, uh, localization-related stuff and, like, tooltip-related stuff. Kalervo looks mega cool. Kalervo looks fucking cracked. Kalervo looks wicked good. I still gotta get him. Um, K Kalervo is basically what I thought to myself, like, damn. It would be cool if they changed Excalibur to be something more like this in my head, and they just made him a different guy instead. Uh, I 
any of the above terms are new to you, you can visit the Lexicon for updates to learn more about the Warframe dev cycle. Download size is about 700 megabytes. It's a very big update, but it's not a very big update file size-wise. It's just a little thing to download. It's a quickie. Uh, there's a dedicated sub forum if you want to post feedback and bug reports, and there's known issues over here. New Exterminate Node, Abyssal Zone. A group of initiates, sent jointly by the pledged syndicates, needs your help finishing a doomed mission to recover Orican Era Dexifios. Hang on a sec, sandwich lady. What do you got? Uh, a bread roll. That. Is that this? Thank you! Alright, it's free bread for me. But it's for you and it's for free, right? The fuck are we on about? Uh, right. Uh, Dexifios from a galleon of Grenier raiders adrift in the Abyssal Zone, looming near Ceres. These tablets were plundered from an archaeological dig site known as Villa Irelia, former home to a powerful and debaucherous Orican couple. <laughs> there's, a, there's a fun little story about this uh, in the clan dojo room. Uh, from Grandma, if you want to hear that. It's it's a, it's a fun little story. They possess a certain cursed energy, inflicting those who carry it in sinister ways. Cut down the Grenier forces to keep them out of their hands, and to clear a path for the initiates to make their escape, all while reaping the reward that lies within the salvaged Dexifios. Requirements. You need rank 2 in any of the pledged syndicates. Any of the six of them will do. My combat level go up. Uh, an inbox message is sent upon doing so. How to play. Abyssal beacons are the key to locating the Grenier Galleon in the Abyssal Zone. Uh, near Ceres. Otherwise perpetually obscured by darkness. Acquire them with 5,000 standing from any of the Pledge Syndicate's offerings to pinpoint the Abyssal Zone node on Ceres. Players can tackle the task either solo or with a pre-made squad. One Abyssal beacon is consumed upon completing the mission from host in pre-made. Those crazy, crazy Oricon. Yup. I, I, <laughs> I remember listening to Grandma's story and thinking like, oh, there's some specific girlies on Tumblr that are gonna, gonna go crazy for this type of story, huh? Damn, you telling me they got doll, doll girls in this one? I know like three or four different people that I follow that are gonna be into that shit. Players can tackle the task either so I already read that. In this mission, you have two objectives. Exterminate the required amount of enemies, and recover a Dexifio by delivering it to the extraction point. There are a total of eight Dexifios hidden on the ship, but only one per player is required to be recovered and deposited in the extraction zone. Four total for full squad to complete the mission. So there's multiple hidden, but you only need, like, one per player. While only one Dexifio per player is required, you can assist your squad mates by dropping off more in the zone after you've successfully delivered your own. Upon entering the zone, the extra Dexifios will count towards your squad mates' objective. Players carrying Dexifios outside of the extraction zone when the timer runs out will also have their deposit counted. You can get extra goodies if you want. People love extra goodies. Syndicate agents, desperate to escape the hellscape they found themselves in, are hiding around the galley and are eager to share their intel on the, lo on the location of Dexifias. Dexifias, Dexifias, something. I don't know how you pronounce it. Look for their ally map markers and interact with them to mark an area on the map where a Dexifio can be found. I bury my bones. Look for the telltale red glow around a Dexifio to find it and pick it up. Similar to data masses, players carrying one will still be able to use their secondary and melee weapons and can pick up or drop their payload at will. Mission hazards. It's a weird word for sure in classic Warframe faction. Yeah, they do straight up love going like, all right, what's a non-standard, non-English word we can use to describe this gameplay mechanic? Mmm, delicious bread roll. All right, prayer up as well. You'll have to see it. I've, like, not been using my prayers because I'm just fighting fucking cows. I don't really need, uh, my strength up or whatever. It's just cows. Warframe is the only game brave enough to ask you, uh, the English player playing it. Hey, you want to learn some fucking Sanskrit? Because you're about to. 
Finding and extracting these comes at a cost, Tenno. A random debuff is applied for the duration that is carried, making the journey to extraction more challenging. Uh, the following debuffs can be applied. Phantom Curse! Gravity is reduced! That seems like a blessing to me! <laughs> Scarcity Curse! Your ammo depletes steadily. Battery weapons we charge slowly. Echo Curse! Take damage when you cast abilities. Ooh, these, these are neat. These are fun little debuffs. That stuff's fun to me. That stuff's fun to me. Hunter Curse! Take damage as you move! <laughs> Land jumps for a brief reprieve from this curse. Ah, if you're jumping around, you're good. Exposure Curse! Your shields get removed. Ah, hope you don't get it on Hildren. I see, I see. I should cook these. Blood Curse! Your health drains steadily. Killing enemies restores it. Ah, you get hungry for blood. You turn into a, a damn slampire. Weariness Curse! Your energy drains steadily. Shadow Curse! Your light dims steadily. Melee kills brighten it. That's cute. That's fun. What about the Pharaoh's Curse? Playing a Naros is already enough of a curse. They're not going to give you more to deal with. Additionally, nearing the required amount of slain enemies will trigger a call for reinforcements, turning your mission into an Eximus stronghold until you extract. They, they put the fucking danger beacon on and you just get fucked. Get out of there. I forgot to finish cooking my meat. Yo, howdy candy. Hope you're having yourself a good day today. It, it does sound a little bit like Minecraft blindness, doesn't it? Someone mentioned Frost getting a rework during Reb's stream. Uh, specifically, I remember they brought up, like, uh, what, what, like, reworks and updates to old frames are you doing next? And Reb was just like, uh, you know, nothing necessarily we can talk about yet. I have ideas, but I don't know if I want to talk about them in, like, a casual setting like this, or if I want to wait till a dev stream kind of thing. Um, so it sounds like they got something, you know, in the old ticker. I'm gonna do maybe one or two more loads of cows, and then we'll, uh, start... We'll start crafting our leather. Geese in the parking lot at work today? Let's fucking go. You love to see geese, you do. You truly do. Started playing Warframe from the past patch note stream, and now you actually know what all this means. We got another one, girls! <laughs> Digital extremes, you should make me unofficial fucking Warframe partner or whatever, and give me goodies. Or money. I don't know, I play I enjoy playing Warframe enough that I wouldn't object to being given goodies. <laughs> I don't know how you sign up for the fucking creator stuff or whatever. I also don't stream Warframe enough to justify it, but... <laughs> Anyways, what was I talking about? Ah, I drink water. Uh, the usual steel path difficulty modifiers are enabled in the Abyssal Zone, but with a toxic twist. Ah, they have a higher chance of spawning Nox. That's fun. Nox are scary. Nox are fun. Keep thinking to ask your old prof to get you an in with DE, but then you get scared. Dude, straight up. I get it. Being scared is fucking scary. I think your work is fucking killer and it'd be a good fit with, like, fucking Warframe specifically. So, like, hey. Shoot your shot, IMO. I do gotta go up for a break in a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit more reading and then we'll get up for the stretch. Don't understand RuneScape at all? It's quite simple. It's a point-and-click adventure game, and it's also a collect-a-thon, and everyone lies to you and tries to tell you it's an MMO. But it does have MMO mechanics. Don't worry about it, smile. <laughs> it's, it's a game where I listen to the nice music and then I click on, like, cows and imps and stuff. I don't gotta click on imps no more. I already got all the damn beads. I did that quest already. I'm... I'm, I'm the fucking genius level streamer who beat Imp Catcher on an Iron Man account without even trying. It was quite simple to me. It was so simple to me, actually. <laughs> How many jiggies does it take to get through the cow door? Ah, uh, 20. It's a pretty early game area. Everyone does love the pirate music. It's true, it's true. All right, new reward. Vein Thorn. Completing the mission rewards 6 to 8 Vein Thorns. 8, 11, and 12 on the Steel Path. 
a new resource found within, within Dexiphios. The rare thorn of an extinct rose and a vital component in Orican Dexiphios and other technology. It is used to craft Dagoth and the Dorklav. You went to freelance. How are these updates looking? Well, the OSRS update is looking all right. They're rerunning an old Halloween update, but that's fine by me, IMO, because they're working on other stuff. Uh, the Splatoon update, pretty good. There's some weird omissions in terms of things they're not updating, but the stuff they are changing is good. Uh, Warframe update looks pretty fucking strong. Uh, we haven't gotten super far into the patch notes yet, but everything they've talked about about this update looks pretty fucking strong. So, the patch notes are looking good this morning. And so are the cows. And you know what else is good? Uh, getting up and taking a break. <laughs> I gotta do that now. I gotta get my stretches in. I wanna get more water to drink. I wanna go wash my soup bowl. Uh, I got a couple of dishes I want to get done so they're not just lying around in the sink come dinner time. Um, and I'm gonna um, do all that and get more water and stretch my legs, and you should do the same for yourself. Because uh, if you've been here the whole stream, we've been sitting around for like, what, two hours or so? You, got, you gotta stretch them knees. You gotta get those hips and spines rolling, man. You're gonna have problems if you don't. You're gonna thank me later in like 50 years. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> You're gonna thank me maybe now, quite frankly, knowing how my body is sometimes. All right. Uh, also, I'm running ads for three minutes, so you have no excuse to stay at your computer. Get up for a bit. We'll be back real soon.
Hey, I'm back. I am a fucking fool. I poured myself a little thing of orange juice when I was making my soup, and I was like, oh yeah, I got a little bit of delicious orange juice I can enjoy with my soup. And then I just forgot it. I just left it out on the kitchen counter. And it's been sitting there this whole time. And so I went out to go like do the dishes, and I was like, oh fuck, my orange juice is still there. I forgot my orange juice. <laughs> Oh, so I just drank it when I was on break. It was good. It was a good orange juice. Orange juice is good. Now I've got, you know, my normal drinks. You forgot? I f I forgot. <laughs> I'm imagining that in like a fucking Dark Souls pop-up type of text. You forgot. You left cream cheese in the cupboard last week? Oh, no. <laughs> I hope it wasn't for long period of time. I hope that cheese didn't spoil. <laughs> My orange juice was just out for like a bit, so it was fine. If you're creaming the cupboard, um, that doesn't rhyme. Cupboard of cream, you best start to scream. There we go. Let's go with that. Uh, and let's log back into RuneScape and get back to the cows and get back to reading patch notes. Your mom tossed it? Oh, that's a shame. That's too bad that that happened. Probably better safe than sorry when it comes to, uh, you know, milk products. <laughs> I just noticed the fucking skeletons on the login screen. Going for a fucking trundle. That's so good. It's good skeletons. Good job, skeletons. Cows resume. Patch notes resume. New Warframe. Dagath. Hey, enjoy your new skull, Volagen. Never underestimate the power and wrath of sullen sadness. Dude, sad girls are gonna go crazy over this new one. Dagath's malice deals high damage. And high horses. They don't talk about the horses yet, but there's horses. Passive. Abundant Abyss. There is a 35% chance that energy and health orbs will be 300% more effective on Dagon. 35% is a pretty fucking high percentage. When they, they... They talked about this being, like, a low percentage on, like, dev streams and stuff. So I was assuming, like, 15, maybe 20% at most. As, like, a low percent ballpark. 35% is ample. That's, like, 1 in 3, and that's good. And like this is this is a frame that seems like it's gonna be casting a lot. So like, yeah, getting more energy is like a default thing built in seems pretty fucking good. I like that a lot more Warframe passives nowadays are like actually more They're more punchy, they're more effective, they actually they actually feel like they do things instead of just being like, this is a cute thing here whenever it comes up, I guess. This has an effect on how you play the frame. In a good way. And that's cool. Rhino's passive is still so funny, it sure fucking is. <laughs> My strength go upper. Uh, Alright, so let's get on to her abilities. Weird sights. Weird sights surround Dagath and seek out nearby enemies. You basically get surrounded by, like, a bunch of swingin' buzzsaws. Kind of like Yureli's swingin' buzzsaws, but different. Those struck are slowed and suffer viral damage with a guaranteed status effect. The scythes also spread doom and extend its duration. Hey, what's doom? We'll get into that soon. Suddenly a weird scythe appear. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it is, isn't it? Weird Scythes is Dagoth's Helminth ability. Uh, it is altered with a diminished slow effect. Uh, and Railjack ability. Doom. Condemn nearby enemies to their doom. A portion of the initial damage Dagoth deals is revisited upon them by a Weird Scythe. They also suffer viral damage. Uh, it's, it's, it's like... It's like Doom in Hades. It's like the, it's like the Ares effect in Hades. You hit them with that Doom effect, it's like a delayed tick of damage that goes on them eventually. Uh, you can do things to stack it up and spread it to other people. Neat. So you hit people with your two to Doom them. Uh, and then you hit them with your one 
to add more damage on top of that and then to spread the doom. Cool. Grave Spirit. Supercharged Dagath's weapons with extra critical damage. The effects are doubled on doomed enemies. Escape fatal blows by briefly assuming a spectral form. So this is uh, a mixture of a damage enhancement. Because Dagath's whole thing is that she is a frame about enhancing the damage of your weapons so that you can hit them with your weapons a lot better. Is the thing that she is largely built around. Uh, I'm going to get spam back on screen so you don't look at my pin. Uh, there we go. Hey, that's spam! Let's kill him! He's dead. Good work, everyone. Um, so, like, you know, you've got uh, the scythes that are spinning around and they are dealing uh, viral, which is a decent element damage-wise, but more importantly, the viral status um, makes it so that you're dealing more damage directly to enemies' health, which means you're able to take them out faster with your weapons and stuff. What item to spam drop? You don't want to know. You don't want to know. It's fucking disgusting. Oh man, get it out of here! You, you don't want it. It's got a really common drop rate too. It's fucked. Anyways, um... So, you know, you hit them with viral so that they're, they can take more damage to their health. Uh, you hit them with doom so that once you're done shooting your weapons at them, it takes even more damage on them after a bit. Then you've got Grave Spirit, which adds more critical damage to your weapons. So if you build up high crit chance on your weapon, you're going to be even punchier on them. With uh, a doubled effect on doomed enemies, so even if they, like, die before uh, the damage tick gets to happen on them, you're, it's because you're dealing way more crit to them. So that's good, and that's cool. And also, Grave Spirit is, um, if you lose all your health, they turn you invincible for a bit, and then you can fight your way back to being alive, which is neat. Uh, it sounds like you're mostly going to want to avoid going into the dead form, though, because then it puts Grave Spirit on cooldown, and you can't get your big damage buff again until after that, or your safety net until after that. So it's good as a just-in-case thing, but also mostly you just want it up so that you can punch him better. Uh, and then... Rakali's Cavalry. Horse Blast. Horse Blast. You've got Horse Blast. You can hit him with Horse Blast. You can you can get him with that Horse Blast. You hit him with horses, you do a Horse Blast. She's got Horse Blast. Phantom Caves charge forth. Caves are horses in Warframe. Inflicting viral damage upon all in their path. This attack strips the defenses of doomed enemies. So you hit him with that doom, and then you hit him with fucking horses. Their armor is gone, their shields are gone, uh, they've got a bunch of ticks on them so that you're dealing more damage to their health directly, which is what you want now that their non-health defenses are gone. <laughs> you're doing more critical damage to them. It is a whole setup about blasting them with awful fucking horses, and then hitting them right in the face with your fists. <laughs> I, I am also a little bit sad that she doesn't have, like, a, a button you hit to get on a horse. But I, I, I think I understand, you know, after the fucking... The reception of Yoreli, you know, after a bunch of bug fixes largely being, Well, I don't like riding around my skateboard in missions, to my re which my response is, Well, you're not brave, but I get it. So I, I, I see why they'd be hesitant to make another frame like that. I gotta pin that message, it's good. I gotta pin that message, it's good. There we go, it actually let me pin it. <laughs> How to acquire Dagath. Dagath can be purchased for instant access in the in-game market for Platinum, like anything else in Warframe. Or her blueprints can be collected from the new Dagath's Hollow Dojo Room, and crafted using Vainthorn earned from the new Abyssal Zone Extermination Zone. Again, if you're in my clan, if you're in the Community Warframe clan, I built that room this morning and I rushed construction for it, you can just go in right now and get the blueprints and start, you know, getting the bits you need to put her together. You, you can just do that. It's, it's all ready for you. It's all good for you. I also went through the, uh... The, the people asking for clan invites on my Discord and added them to the clan, so, uh, if you posted that a bit ago and you were like, oh, I'm still waiting to get in, you're in now. Does the patch note say what resources we need? No, it only mentions the new one that they added. The rest of it is all just, like, relatively common resources, and then, like, you know, uh, I think one of them needs, um, Argon Crystals. 
very normal standard common Warframe equipment uh, materials. The only out of the way one is the new one they added, really. And then Argon Crystals, which you gotta get those for most things anyways. They, they gotta justify the existence of Argon Crystals by making items that you need Argon Crystals to make. You know? With the release of Dagath, the number of purchased loadout slots has been increased from 21 to 22. Okay. She's got a helmet. You can get a helmet. It's much more horse-looking. All of her helmets involve her having a giant hole in her head. I wonder why that is. Well, you can listen to Grandma's story and learn about it. Smile. Glory in the ghoulish splendor of a pierced skull. The Dagath Gansian helmet. Uh, the helmet can be purchased from the in-game market. Its blueprint will be added to the next Nora's Mix series store. We will update you in the near future on when to expect it. The current night wave is still happening. They haven't said when the new one's happening. New weapon, the Dorclave. Dorclave? Dorclave? I'm not sure. Anytime I think of any word that sounds or looks even vaguely like this, I think of... So there, there's a Fire Emblem game where there's a character named Dorcas or Dorcas or Dorcas or however you want to pronounce his name. Um, and Nintendo of America did a fucking commercial for that game, where for some reason they're like, oh yeah, you know, no no one can be trusted, always be on your guard, we gotta make sure that we're, we're ready to deal with, like, you know, attackers at the gates or anyone coming to get us, and then a dude just drops dead in his fucking meal, and a, <laughs> someone else looks over and goes... What happened to Dork Ass? <laughs> to which the guy breeding, or the guy ma main guy talking in the commercial just goes, Yeah, I poisoned his button. Everyone starts laughing. Um, and I didn't know that Dork Ass, or Dorcas, was the name of a character in that game. I just thought he was calling that dead dude a fucking dork. They put poison in his mutton. What happened to Dork Ass? That dude's dead and you're calling him a fucking dipshit! <laughs> also, the tone of that commercial is like pretty much fucking nothing like any of the Fire Emblem games, which is really funny to me. <laughs> they make it seem like it's fucking Among Us, and it's like, no, it's a fucking. It's a fantasy tactics game. <laughs> Don't trust anyone ever in your army or whatever, and it's like, no, that game is about. Building up trust with everyone in your army, isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, new weapon. Uh, Dorclave. After 10 kills or assists, Dorclave enters a spectral state that doubles weapon follow-through and guarantees status effects for the next 10 attacks. Uh, follow-through is... How to explain this? So, when you swing a melee weapon, you know, it's like cleaving in front of you, right? Follow-through is the stat that determines how much damage you do to the other targets after hitting your initial target. So let's say you have a weapon with, like, 0.8 follow-through, and you swing at two dudes, and you hit the first dude for 100 damage. You're hitting the second dude for 80. It, it reduces the damage, basically, with the more dudes you hit. So that you're not just doing, you know, like your fucking one million damage swing and everyone in front of you is dead forever. You can still do that, but it makes it a little harder to do. Uh, you can get the blueprints from the from the hollow dojo room and you can earn vein form vein thorn from the new exterminate node to craft its components. Doubled follow through is good for blade and whips. I've never really fucked with blade and whip before. Like they're cute. I like the way they look, but I've never really played with really any of them is like a weapon. Let's get- I think it's ten coins for the fucking gate. We're going to Alcarid now. Uh, Dagoth's Hollow. Resurrect a Nabarus legend with a new dojo room. Dagoth's Hollow. Here you will find the Shrine of Dagoth, where you can acquire Dagoth and Dorclave's blueprints to be crafted in your foundry. Interact with the pillar to listen to Grandmother tell the haunting tale of a Dax cavalry woman, her beloved steed, and the fate bestowed upon both of them by those who had once treasured her. It's a it's a fun little spooky Halloween story. I liked it. And it's an intro to the 
the frame as a character. It's fun. I liked it. The spirit of Dagoth's Kaith, Rakali, is strong here, allowing you to act, allowing you access to your Kaith and all of its customization options. So if you've done Duviri Paradox, um, and you've unlocked horses, you can do horse customization in in Grandma's spooky crypt room, which is cute. All right, Grendel Prime access. It is Fat Boy Fall. Get you one. Warframe has horses? Yeah, they added them a couple updates ago. Randall's fucking awesome. And now he's Prime. Prime Warframe is like a normal Warframe, but slightly stronger. And with cool uh, new looks to them. And they got gold filigree. The insatiable hunger of Grendel Prime is here. Join the feast and gain instant access to a new Prime Warframe, his signature Prime weapons and accessories, as well as 90-day boosters and more. We've got Grendel Prime, Psylocke Prime, which is like a, a a duplex pistol where you like hold down the trigger to fire one shot and let go to fire another. Uh, Masseter Prime. Masseter is a fucking Oni chainsaw club that also looks like, you know, a rotating meat spit, which is funny. Um... So you they whenever they put out a prime, you can like buy the frame for like real money and get like you know a bunch of extra goodies alongside it, or you can just grind out for it in game like any other thing. So like you can you can go no I want him right now or eh, I'll just get his parts. Uh, they've also got exclusive cosmetics that you do have to buy, and you get like boosters alongside it. Uh, instantly gain access to Grendel Prime from the in-game market or earn relics in-game to craft Grendel Prime, Zalak Prime, and Master Prime in your factory. That's what I just said, basically. <laughs> now that Grendel Prime access is available, the following items have been added to the vault for a future resurgence rotation. Oh, that's good to know, because I think I literally did just finish building, like, Harrow and Scourge today, and I think I still gotta do Nell Prime, but... Good to know <laughs> that I just got his bits. Psylocke has an anti eximus mod and an Incarnan. All I know about Psylocke and Karnan is that it's, like, actually literally bugged and not quite working right. Uh, and it'll be better once they get some things about it working, but at the moment it's just kind of, um, unfortunately in a bit of a state, which is too bad. I do like that gun, it's cute, and I like playing with it, so I'm glad that it's got more goodies to it quite frankly. Uh, because stuff got vaulted, uh, they need new sacrifice parts to level up your syndicates. If you know what that means, you know what it means. If you don't, don't worry about it. You will if you ever play. Uh, new in-game market items and bundles. You can buy the Dagoth collection. It comes with Dagoth and her weapon and her helmet and horse cosmetics. Please note that Dagoth's Kaith Shoulder Skull is an armor attachment titled Dagoth Armor you can equip as desired. Uh, a couple of frames have that, where like their default appearance comes with like little armor bits that you can, you know, choose to equip or not. Hey man, I'd like to buy some crafting equipment. Uh, what do you got? I don't remember if I have a chisel. I'm gonna buy all your thread. I'm gonna buy a needle. I'm gonna buy a ring mold, I'm gonna buy a necklace mold, I'm gonna buy an amulet mold, I'm gonna buy a holy mold, I'm gonna buy a sickle mold, I'm gonna buy a bolt mold. I said buy a bolt mold, there we go. I'm gonna buy a bracelet mold, and I'm gonna buy a tiara mold. Alright. I don't remember if I have a chisel, I'm gonna buy a chisel just in case. If I didn't, oh well, it's a couple of coins, I'll live. Is this a pants store over here? Hang on a sec. Oh, it's a plate leg shop, okay. I forgot, they just had pants stored over here in Alcarid. Hey, man. <laughs> His name is Louis Legs! I've literally never been here before! <laughs> you can just straight up buy. That's so funny. That's great. <laughs> The Dagoth room is a lot less expensive than you expected. It's pretty cheap, and also it was only like 100 platinum to rush it, so I just straight up rushed it uh, in the clan dojo. We just got it. I don't know if you're... I, I, I'm assuming, based on the fact that you're talking about the prices, that you're not in my clan. But uh, for the sake of people that are, again, uh, 
I just, I just, I just, like, rushed it. It's ready. You can just get the, you can get the goods. You can get the bits. Let's put this shit away. Alright, and I'm not doing fighting right now, so take this off, take this off, take this off, take this off, take this off. Bank. Away, 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 away. Sweater. Crown. Scarf. One, two, three. You go away. Deposit all these. There we go. Cool. All right. All right, I need to take the, the, the hides out. To tan them. Uh, withdraw all. Let's go. Thank you, Panini Creature. Damn, that's fucking cheap. I gotta get in on that. How active is my clan? I mean, it's just a clan for whoever wants to join and, you know, have access to the dojo and stuff. If you want to play with people there, you're welcome to. You can always ask people in my Discord. But it's not a you-have-to-be-fucking-active-or-you're-kicked-out kind of clan. It's, hey, you have access to the dojo. You can, like, get the research stuff. There's people you can talk to if you want to. There's people you can play with if you want to. It's, it's chill. Warframe is a game I play on and off every now and then, so I'm not worried about it being, like, a super intensive thing. Tan. All my damn hides. Thank you! Alright. What can I make? Let's see, let's see. Uh, crafting level 8. Armor. I can make boots until we hit level 9. Boots it is! The clan you're in is fairly quiet and has been for years. I mean... In terms of, like, people chatting in-game, my clan's also relatively quiet. Frankly, you're probably gonna hear from people more just going on the Discord and talking to people there. That's fine. I like it that way, personally. I can now craft cowls! Let's make cowls. Alright, let's go. Anyways. Please note that Daggett's caved shoulder skull- oh, I already read that. Okay. You can also get just a bundle of the horse cosmetics if you just want the horse cosmetics. Crafting go up. Ooh, now I can do bowstrings. Cool, I can start doing more fletching. Good, 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 good. New void shell skins. Void shell skins are if you want to look like a cool Power Ranger. It's fun. Let's go sell this shit somewhere. There's like a general store here. Get some money out of it. Uh, they added ones for Barrage, Nidus, and Protea. This is what the Nidus one looks like. If you want to be a meat power ranger. The Void Shell stuff is cool. I do like it a lot. I don't think I really have any, but... It's neat. Alright. Get some money for that. Get some money for these. Back to it! I, I'm clicking the wrong button. Whoops, there we go. Okay. Void Adornment Bundle 5, which is a, a bundle of the three new Void Shell skins, if you want them. These are, these are like premium cosmetics, so you gotta pay the like premium currency for it, platinum. But you can straight up just like... War Warframe has a very robust and active like trading community. Um, so, like, you can just, like, you know, run relics and get prime parts of basically any kind, and someone's gonna want to buy, wanna buy them for, like, at least a little bit of platinum, which you can then use on whatever you want. And so, like, that's kind of the free-to-play way of getting more, like, slots for Warframes and weapons and stuff, is you just go do relics, and then you sell, uh, parts to other players, and then you just use that platinum to get things for yourself. Alright, tan my hides, man. Yes, please. All. Back to it. Cowards. Chilling Glyph Bundle. Limited time. A limited time collection of morbidly festive glyphs. If you want some fun Halloween uh, profile pictures and stuff, you can get them. One of the few games where you can reliably get premium currency without spending actual money. Yeah, this is something I say sometimes about Warframe, but it's like... I feel like it's one of the most ethically designed, like, 
free-to-play grind games with, like, a premium currency system, where, like, the premium currency is all entirely just for the sake of, like, you know, alleviating the grind a little bit, or the, rather the weight a little bit, you still have to grind for it. Or no, you can just buy the things outright sometimes, so, like, alleviating the grind or the weight a little bit, or, like, you know, letting you have more options for your account, and you can literally just get all of these things without spending a single cent on it. It's good in that regard. It's good in that regard, IMO. We can now do Slam Braces. Warframe's a cool video game. I like it a lot. I think neat folks are making it and making sure it's not like a, an awful fucking slot machine type of video game, which I appreciate, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, you can get some fun, some fun cosmetics for Halloween if you want. Members can craft oil lamps. Okay. Back to the van braces. Hey, more Halloween sign. More Halloweenish cosmetics. You can get a, a funny Sephiroth Batwing cape. You can get uh, some some fun meat for your for your little buddy following you around. Or you can get them all together. Uh, you can get a thing that turns the like mission narrator announcer character into a vampire. <laughs> if you want her to be a vampire. Uh, and then more Day of the Dead skins, which are always cute, IMO. Fashion framers continue winning? Yep! Uh, what are you selling? Two coins for a leather cowl, because I already sold a bunch to ya. Alright. Bam braces, seven coins. Sell them all. Nice, thanks. So there's uh, a bunch of different guns and capes and armor bits and swords and stuff that you can get fun little skull skins for. Uh, there's just, just a bundle for just the armor, a bundle for just the weapons, and they've added a new color palette. A new color palette that you can get now that they have enough new Warframes to fill out a number three. You can get all their colors now. Uh, let me get more cowhide out. Nice. get more leather. System changes and general quality of life. A lot of this is stuff that we have covered in previous stream, so I'm probably not going to go too, too much into detail on this. There's just a straight-up black dragon hide there on the, on the... Can I take that? Oh, other players have dropped it. Okay, no, I can't. Interesting. I wonder why they put that there. I can't make a leather body yet, but I can still make fan braces. Alright. Let's see. So, Warframe shield changes. They have changed how shields work because they realized, oh, people taking advantage of shield gating means that you are incentivized to build as little shield as possible on your Warframe, and shields that just have a lot of shields by- or frames that have a lot of shields by default just kind of get fucked in that regard. So, changes. Shields in general. Give you 50% damage resistance now instead of just a flat 25. Um, and mods that, like, improve your shield recharge rate also improve your shield recharge delay. Which, uh, is cool. And in general, we're just buffed mods in general. Uh, secondly, shield gating. So what shield gating is, is, um, this is a mechanic some games have, is like a one-hit kill prevention. What it basically does is, um... If your shields break, there's a period of invincibility where you can't take any more damage to, like, prevent you from just having a, tr a truck run you over and you're instantly killed without you being able to react to it. Um, and what it used to be was, as long as your shields were full, no matter what your maximum shield levels were, as long as they were considered full or over shields, you would get the full invulnerability delay. Uh, if they weren't refilled before, like, if they weren't refilled since your last shield gate instance, then you would just get partial invulnerability. Now, uh, it's on a mostly linear scale, where if you have, what, like 300-ish, 325 shields, which most frames do just have by default, if you have 325 shields, then you get that, like, original 1.3 second invulnerability. Um, total shields. 
if you if you have more than that, you get longer invulnerability. Up to a cap of like 1150 gives you two and a half seconds of invuln. Uh, and then at that point it just tapers off at that max. If you have less than that, it gives you less invulnerability time. Um, this is now a sliding scale of how much were your shields recovered, like maximally two before they were broken. Rather than it being like, oh, were you at max shields? You get the whole benefit. Were you at not max shields? You get shit all. Um, so it's like encouraging you to have more shields and keep your shields up and actually use your shields as a defensive tool instead of just, well, they're there and you want as little as possible to game the system. Uh, it does mean that some frames that have like really small shields like Rendell just will inherently have less shield gating, which fits with the theme of him being a meat tank instead of a shield tank. Uh, it also means things like Hildren are feeling really goddamn good right about now. <laughs> good for Hildren, honestly. Uh, okay, so this is the thing. Partially depleted shields do not have a separate shield gate duration. If your shields are only partially restored when uh, you start taking damage on them again, it just scales to whatever that the amount they were at before they ran out kind of thing. I mean, yeah, Hildren also gets her own special shield getting amount, but I'm still reading shit. You're getting ahead of me. You have to be patient. You have to learn to be patient. It, it was very funny uh, seeing someone on the fucking, like, stream before the update dropped this morning when they just mentioned, like, yeah, you know, we changed how shield gating works. Someone in chat just went like, Oh, so Hildren is getting nerfed into the fucking ground now. Got it. And it was like, you didn't read a goddamn thing, did you, dude? You didn't pay any attention to any of the changes, did you? <laughs> this person was not reading. Their ass was not listening. And I had a chuckle about it. Uh, so yeah. Not ha having more shields is now a good thing to invest in if your frame is a frame that has more shields or way to get shields back. Shields are now good instead of having no having as little shield as possible is now good. Which is, I think, more interesting to play with. But also, if you liked the way the old shield gating system worked, there's a new corrupted mod that you slap on that gives you a smaller shield and gives you basically what shield gating was previously. Uh, in case you just really do want to do that again. My crafting 15. Snail shell helmets. Crab shell armor? And oak birdhouses. That's cute. Crab armor. More leather bodies. Shields in general get more DR2. Yeah, we talked about that already. <laughs> we literally already covered that. <laughs> Why is this box moving? Oh, it's a person. Okay. That's scary. So yeah, you can get this and you can put it in a mod slot instead of it being like a an item thing originally intended to be a item that makes the game harder. Was actively just an item that was actually making the game easier. We can make holy symbols now. Cut red topaz and red topaz rings and opal necklaces. Nice. But yeah, point being, Hildren is feeling real fucking good right about now, which makes me happy because I love Hildren. She is one of my favorite frames to play. She's a lot of fun. And she gets a fucking arm cannon. And she's large. Anyways, if you like old shield gating, you can put this mod on, and it's more or less old shield gating as a mod slot now. Which, there's probably some, uh... There's probably some frames that really do want to just stick to the old system in some way or another. Just because, like, maybe they can't get their shields back quite so easily without, like, a bunch of investment. Or maybe they just don't want to worry about it too much or whatever. So it's an option if you still want it. Uh, it's in Oregon Vaults, and they have an alert that's going on for, like, a week, a couple days, something like that. So you can just get the mod right now. Oh, I wanted to sell more. You can just get the mod right now instead of having to farm vaults for it. Which is neat. Uh, dragon keys debuff shields and shield gating, because the whole point of dragon keys is that they're meant to make carrying them around harder. 
instead of it just one of them magically being the one that makes the video game easier, actually. The mission is a no shields nightmare mission. That's cute. <laughs> That's fun. A few other things. Hildren's passive has been buffed. She now has 3.5 seconds of shield gating alongside everything else. I didn't get more leather. I forgot to go get that. Updated grenade fans description to better communicate how shield satellites work with shield gating. Okay, Protea reconfigured grenades to work as overcharging shield generators. Da -da 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 -da. When shields break, a satellite is destroyed to double minimum shield gate invincibility time. When shields break, a satellite is destroyed to double minimum shield gate invincibility time. So is that saying like... Like this range here is doubled kind of thing? Or does it just mean like your gate is doubled in general, depending on whatever it was that you had? Wording things in Warframe can get a little weird sometimes. <laughs> I wonder if this dude is a bot, considering his name is... It could just be a dude that loves key smashing, it's possible. Uh, shield regeneration delay reduction is now capped at 80%. Okay, so you can't just get like super infinite forever uh, shield regen delay, because that might uh, just make you actually invincible. Many mods have been updated to offer this benefit, leading to the possibility of stacking shield regen to be faster than shield gate expiring. Yeah, I saw at least a couple videos around the time of them, you know, talking about, hey, this is what we're changing to the game. People being like, oh, this is going to be great. You can make builds where you can just have your shield regen be fucking infinite forever. And so your shield never actually depletes and you never take any damage and it's fine. And it's like, they're not going to let that slide, actually. <laughs> they're not going to let you do that. They're changing that. You can see that coming from, like, a, a yard away. Unholy symbols of Zamorak and Zerishian robes. Okay, I am going to craft more leather bodies. I don't think I can make bam braces yet, right? Let's see. Yeah, ne oh, chaps is what I needed. Okay, next level is chaps. All right, we're cool. Keep, keep going. No, no, keep, keep going. Keep going. Come on, girl, work that leather, work that leather. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Now players should have easier access to reducing the regen time without risking issues with permanent invulnerability. Guardian Break shield regen delay reduction has been decreased from 90% to 80% at max rank as a result. We have buffed the effects duration from 8 seconds to 12 seconds at max rank to compensate. Okay. Uh, whatever the fucking focus school is that's like support stuff related to like, you know, giving your teammates shield and healing. We keep winning. We keep winning. <laughs> we keep winning. All right, I can make leather chaps. Leather chaps are what I call the British fellas at the gay bar. Is this anything? Need your feedback ASAP. Let me know what you think. All right. Updated the shield stat on hover description in the upgrade screen to describe shield break functionality and include shield gate duration for your current Mac modded max shields. Cool. Cool, cool. There are many variables that will impact the overall outcome of these shield changes with the Abyss of Dagath and will be keeping a close eye on player feedback now that this is in the community's hands. With this update's release, you'll be seeing many changes in your arsenal upgrade screen, both from shield changes listed above and in the following overhaul. Uh, the number squish. It's not an actual stat squish, it's just a numbers that you see squish, basically. Uh, let's sell one, let's sell one, and I gotta keep one, okay. Now we go to see Charlie the Tump. I gotta get my clue scroll first, because I need the clue scroll for that. Uh, anyways, this we covered this substantially in um, the previous stream where I read a bunch of like dev workshops on this shit. So basically what it means is they've changed uh, what mods say so that they more accurately reflect what they're buffing. And they have them buff, like, the final, like, your actual health and shield and armor total instead of what your total at level 1 or unranked is. 
Uh, b basically, it's easier to understand what it means when a mod says, this increases your health. Instead of it being like, oh, this says it increases your health by like 400 whatever. And it only adds like 200 health, actually. Now it actually just says like, hey, this is a 100% increase. And it doubles it. Warframe math is now a little bit dead in the ground, but let's be real, it's still it's still out there. Deposit this, deposit all these. Read our scroll. Alright. Need to give Charlie some leather chaps. Uh, so yeah, now they just say they increase 100 plus 100% health, shield capacity, armor, max energy. Uh, to compensate for that, basically all fucking Warframe stats were very slightly changed, and now all Warframes have very slightly buffed health and shields and armor and energy max, etc, etc, with a couple exceptions where, like, sometimes they didn't change the armor, uh, sometimes they didn't really change the energy, sometimes someone now has, like, two less max energy with flow equipped, stuff like that. Uh, we're not gonna go into much of the specifics, let's see. Um, yeah, stuff is different. They they mention specifically, like, a couple of the standouts here, like Lavos, Nidus, and Kalervo all have buffs to their armor value as a result of this change. Nidus Prime's armor increased from 910 to 1050 with max steel fiber equipped. With all, three, with all three Umbral mods, the buff results in a difference of 1198 armor to 1470 armor. Hey, if you like playing Nidus, good news! Nidus is fucking huge now. Huger than before. Bigger than before. Bigger than before. I think an unfortunate casualty of this change is that, um, you can't quite as easily get 1,337 health on, um, Mesa Prime. Which is really sad. But... Garuda and Garuda Primes receive buffs to their modern energy pool. Garuda Prime's energy stat was previously 800 with a maxed out flow. With maxed out prime flow. And is now 912. Garuda is fucking full of that. The tank is full. The tank is huge. <laughs> that's awesome. Good for Garuda. Garuda's fun. I like her. So that's great. Uh, they've got an entire list of all the stat changes. Some specific mods were changed that, you know, give, like, health value and shield and stuff. You can look at the specifics if you want. We covered them. Um, they also updated for Necromex and Arcwings. Same thing. Uh, focus Lens Convergence Buff. We also already covered this. They're all just giving you more focus now. Focus is what you use to upgrade your wizard and have better wizard abilities. What's your wizard? Don't worry about it. Unless you've already unlocked it, in which case, you know, it's your focus stuff. Your, your operator, your drifter, that sort of stuff. It's a wizard. You get a wizard. You can get a wizard eventually if you play Warframe. There's cool story quests related to it. Uh, don't worry about the hows and whys of it. You can you can do that if you want to play the video game. Or you can look it up if you don't want to. Let's see. Ooh, I'm getting a bunch of frame drops. Hang on a second. Wait for that to even out a little bit. Did I leave Steam open? I did not. Okay, so it's not like downloading something on Steam or anything. I'm gonna eat some blueberries while I wait for this to stop. That's too bad, it's been pretty goddamn stable all day. Damn, yeah, it's affecting RuneScape now, too. The dog is a spidey dog. <laughs> I'm also smelling smoke outside, that's concerning. Damn. Ah, I see. It's just DC'd me from RuneScape. Well, any second now. I was wondering if something like this was gonna happen again on stream. It's been a while. Delicious berries in the meantime.
Are we good? Are we back? Are we good? Not RuneScape still being fucky. Okay. The stream keeps freezing for you. What? Oh, probably just you. Do you not see the 50 other messages in chat going, oh yeah, the stream's being fucky. <laughs> like, they're right there. Uh-oh. Refresh the stream. We're good now, I think. I guess there's like fucking construction or something happening nearby. I feel the entire house shaking and like power tools going. I wonder if that's somehow related. Probably not, but... Hey man, here's some leather chaps. Oh, that's it. That's the casket. Alright, let's open her up. I got a unique drop from that. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. Bear feet. Vicious bear slippers. Aw, cute. <laughs> also, I do like the, 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 the funny stray dog being a cute spider now. Trick or dog treats. Hey, bud. Damn, my house is fucking vibrating. This is giving me a migraine. Oh, I got a free staff of air. That's cool, too. I can use that for training my spells. Which, now that I'm done getting the leather van braces, like, or whatever they were that I gave him, um, for that, for that clue scroll, maybe I do a bit of, um, magic training so that I can get feathers and stuff to craft arrows so that I can train ranged. Let's do that. Let's do that. The dog you saw was dressed like Ghostface. Awesome. Hope that isn't hell weather I'm feeling. Oh, no, no, no. It's absolutely power tools. Uh, like, it's that specific type of sound and vibration. It's... I knows what it is. We don't have a lot of mind runes. So we might want to do a bit of rune crafting, actually. Let's see. Rune crafting. Uh, mind runes are level two. So let's... Actually, deposit all. Deposit these boots. Let's get our pickaxe out. I still gotta upgrade my pickaxe at some point. And we... are going to... was worried for me for a second? Why? I literally said what it is. <laughs> Do you think I am fucking lying or being an idiot when I'm like, oh, it's probably just people doing construction? No! <laughs> this happens in my area, I know what it is. <laughs> Come on now. That's being silly. House construction outside your window across the street? Ah! Yeah, that was happening a little while ago. Um, the neighbors... Very nicely, actually. Uh, the, the fence between their place and ours was, like, getting real broken down, all nasty-like, and they were like, Hey, we're just gonna... We're gonna fix this up. You don't gotta worry about, like, paying us or nothing. We're just gonna, you know, get it real good. And then my dad was like, Oh, that's nice of you guys. I'm gonna make you ribs as a thank you. Hey, man. Teleport me. Alright, it's a Varrock diary. Okay. Let's get Rune Essence. But, uh, yeah, I've also just seen, like, a bunch of trucks and stuff outside in the area the past couple of days, so they're doing stuff. It happens. Alright, so, focus lenses. They're better now. They give you more. That's good, it's less of a grind. All orbs now offer a flat 5,000 focus bonus. If you touch Delicious Ball, you just get a flat 5,000 as well. That's good. You love to see it. Nightwave changes. We read all this as well. Um, it's, uh... They're making changes to different acts, and they're removing some, they're adding some. Oh my god, you're live? Yeah, I've been live for hours. <laughs> was just watching the VOD of you and Chase playing Mario Sunshine. She goes by Scout nowadays, actually. 
so there's some new stuff for your night waves. There's a screen that you can look at to show like what the highlights are of the active night wave. You can give it a look. Uh, they're making changes to the call missions, the break and armor missions. Thanks for letting you know. Yeah, no problem. She she doesn't really do like stream stuff anymore, and I don't know how many folks like you know follow her on Tumblr or anything where she talks about it. So I figure I can nudge people and be like, no, 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 not anymore. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. You know. So, you have enemy radar, loot radar, so you can see goodies, you move faster, you can get more goodies to buy more stuff with in the missions. Uh, there are more weapons you can find in the missions to play with. Archon Hunt damage attenuation changes. They made changes to the Archon boss fights, so that they are allegedly less, um, like, damage spongy. Supposedly, hopefully. That is the hope, at least. And, uh, now also you can't really one-shot them anymore, which is hopefully good. Oop, we're getting frame drops again. Alright, my internet's doing the thing again. I will wait patiently. I will eat more berries. Hmm. It's delicious berries. There we go. All good now. Where is the air shrine? Is that the one near Falador? I'm just gonna search this actually. I don't feel like doing the scavenger hunt for it. I literally already know where it, where it is at some point. RS OSRS uh, air tiara or air altar air altar. There we go. Yeah, it's south of Falador. Okay, we're gonna go there. Uh, and continue reading. The goals are to increase player damage output, thereby reducing the overall time to kill Archons, make big hits feel impactful by no longer throttling them to an extreme degree, encourage build diversity for Archons, and reduce the ability to use one-shot builds. Which, you know, sounds good on paper. Uh, now that it's in our hands, they're very much like, hey, it's in your hands, you can try it out, give us feedback, let us know how it actually is. Uh, so if you do that content and you're like, hey, I like this change, or hey, this change sucks, you can let them know. Alright. The walk to Falador begins. I've never done any of the Archon missions, uh, just because, like, my gear's never been super up to snuff for them. And, oh yeah, here's the, here's the, the spooky dog with the knife. That's the killer. That's the killer. The killer is here. The killer is following me. I love you, the killer. You're my friend. Goodbye, the killer. I never ended up doing any of the Archon missions. Um, and I also never ended up doing any of the Call missions, just because I was like, Oh yeah, I have these unlocked now! And then, like, took a break from the game for a while. Took you an embarrassingly long time to realize these weren't patch notes for RuneScape? Oh, we already read those patch notes! That was the start of the stream! <laughs> Appreciate the devs keeping their ears open. Yeah, Warframe in general has been very much like... Since, like, the outset of the game, very much like, yeah, you know, we like hearing what players have to say about how we're putting the game together and, uh, what changes we're making and how they affect how they play, stuff like that. Yeah, thanks for stopping on by, Bedsores. You have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. So, uh, it's, it is cool to see them like, yeah, here's what we're changing. Here's why we're doing it. Here's our, like, design philosophy. Let us know how it goes. Let us know what you think. We'll consider what you think. Uh, new player path improvements. We also covered all of this. Uh, importantly, though, involving the flawed mods. Flawed mods being removed from the game. Having them replaced with normal variants. After posting our initial dev workshop outlining the flawed mods removal, Many players expressed their desire to keep them for a variety of reasons. Luckily for those Tenno, we managed to find the original, the original disposal storage site of these flawed mods and have made them available to players once more. You can head to the fucking dumpster if you really want to have your own flawed mods for your collection. 
do Har Archon hunts every week. They're kind of a pain. Yeah, they, like, I like the idea behind them, and I like on paper the idea of, like, yeah, this boss has some damage resistance, so it's, like, an actual thing you gotta do the engage in the mechanics of. But, like, it sounds like the attenuation was way too strong, and also just encouraged people to go for a one-shot build anyways. <laughs> so... I like the sound of the changes. I would have to actually play them and see what other people are saying about them. But it but it sounds like a good start. Flawed mods used to be a symbol. Having broken ammo drum... See, broken ammo drum specifically was like... That was, that was, a, that was an April Fool's thing. That, that, that one was a gag one. That was a special one. That one's different. Have they done anything to allow you to underrank a mod? What, you mean like remove a level from a mod that you already have upgraded? No. I don't think they would ever do that. You just gotta get a new one and upgrade that again. Oh, we're level two, so we can make mind runes. So now I gotta look up where the fucking mind altar is, because I don't remember. Let's see. Uh, Runecraft. I want Mind Altar. That is... Oh, that's relatively close. Okay. Let's go. Don't like thinking about juicier Vayhack? What's wrong? What's wrong? You don't like Vayhack? You don't like cheeked up Vayhack? You don't like so sopping wet Vayhack? What's the matter? Thank you, Mousehold, for the 27 months. Uh, we have finished for the moment clicking on cows. But... Maybe more in the future. Maybe more in the future. I gotta get more runes so that I can cl click on cows in a different way. Or click on chickens. Chickens are a type of cow. But there are cows over here, so you can enjoy them. Runescape cows are good. Runescape pigs are also good. I was playing with Puzz the other night on stream, and she really liked the way the pigs looked. She knows, like, nothing about RuneScape. So it was fun to be like, yeah, here's a pig. Good walk? Hell yeah. I'm looking forward to my walk later today. After my little strut outside I had this morning. Yeah, the trees are getting all autumnal here as well. There's this one house I like walking by that just has, like, a gorgeous, gorgeous maple tree that's, like, a super bright crimson right now. I love to see it. You love to see it. I do gotta go on break soon, so I think I am gonna get up a little early. Hop to a quick bathroom. And then we'll, uh, get back to patch notes. But real quick, uh, you can go to the storage site near Cressetal and Iron Wake on Earth to purchase them anew. You just go to the fucking dumpster and buy them if you want them. <laughs> uh, we did our best to price these rare finds fairly, keeping in mind that these are now collector's items, of course, so they can be yours for the cost of a few thousand credits, which is very funny. They now actually are status symbols to a degree. Probably more a status symbol of old fogies than anything, but all the same, that's cute. While this is a tongue-in-cheap implementation of new flawed mods, we appreciate the value these mods offer to certain players and wanted to keep them available for those who requested it. Due to the unique acquisition of these mods, players will not be able to dissolve them for endo or transmute them, which is fair. Otherwise, you could just burn all your credits into endo and transmutes. Break time. We go break time. I get up. I stretch. Uh, I'm going to pace around the house. I'm going to look outside, see if there's any cool birds or cats nearby. Uh, get, get up, get yourself a stretch, get yourself a drink or a snack. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.
we're back. So, two things. Uh, I figured out what the smell was, and I figured out what the construction work was, and they're both related. Um, so the smell wasn't burning. It 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 would it, it smelled kind of like burning rubber or burning industrial chemical. It was hot asphalt, because the construction is them tearing out chunks of the road, literally right in front of my house, and replacing it with like new stuff. It's tar. <laughs> it's tar. <laughs> It's got that asphalt smell. Um, and I think that might have something to do with why the internet's been a little bit fucked. Uh, this, like, past little bit, literally as soon as the, the construction started and I could, like, hear it and feel it. Because, like, we're on a fiber optic network and those cables are, like, underground, right? It, it stands to reason that if they're out here, you know, tearing up the ground and replacing stuff on the ground, it might be jostling the cables a little bit. <laughs> Considering how it feels like they're jostling the whole fucking house right now. Speak of the devil, it's happening again. Uh, this is really unfortunate, actually. I'm kind of mad, but they, they, they gotta fucking do it, I guess. Uh... It's also a little inconvenient that they're kind of parked literally right in front of my house's, like, driveway. My folks are coming home soon. They gotta be able to pull into the house. <laughs> I don't know how they're gonna do that if, like, massive road rollers and, like, industrial dump trucks are right in front of our house. <laughs> you can't hear anything, at least. That's... interesting. Considering that the mic is definitely, like, picking up the sound of the vibrating happening. Like, I can see the microphone is, like, showing activity. Specifically when the fucking awful moving and shaking is happening. But I mean, I guess it's good that people can't hear it or whatever. It's not really loud, it's just vibrating a lot, which gives me a headache. Hmm. Damn, I'm kind of sad. We might have to cut this short. Um, the connection keeps getting unstable about it, which, uh, that's a bummer. I was kind of hoping to do a <laughs> to do a stream this afternoon and keep doing it. So it goes. Not like I can really be out here and go, hey, can you guys stop? Um doing construction work at an hour when most people aren't around to be inconvenienced by it, because I specifically am being inconvenienced by it. You know? That's how it goes. Uh, it seems like it's okay now, so maybe I'll just fucking keep running with it as it is. Give me just a quick sec to put some more blueberries in my mouth, though. My little snack. My little gamer snack. They would just eat berries. This is a question a bear asks someone. You ever just eat salmon? Damn, the subtitles are kind of fucked, too. I hadn't considered, because it's like a, an online thing, that the net problems would be causing problems with that as well. <laughs> well, the rest of the stream is going to be a little scuffed. If you have a problem with it, you can write a strongly worded letter to the Quebec municipal government about it, because not much I can do <laughs> in this specific instant. It's not actually the fault of my ISP. It's the fault of the people tearing up the road. <laughs> ah. Well, it's hit zero kilobytes a second. So it might actually be dead dead. No, we're back. Okay. Maybe I just call stream here, actually. Maybe I just call it early, unfortunately. I want to read the rest of these damn patch notes. But, like, I suppose I can always just do that, like... Another time, there's not much left. 
Actually, no, there's quite a bit left, but a bunch of it is stuff we've seen before, but also... I suppose I can always do this... ...later tonight if I want to stream more. I don't know if I want to stream more later tonight, though. No offense to RuneScape, but at least this isn't enthralling important gameplay. On the one hand, you take that back right now, right fucking now. On the other hand, yeah, that's why I'm reading while I play it. <laughs> this whole, uh, refresh, by the way. I don't know how behind people are, but, uh, give, give her a refresh. But, uh, yeah, this, this... The gist of this entire stream was I wanted to test out how easy it would be for me to play RuneScape and also have something pulled up in another tab that I'm reading at the same time. Because my friend Frankie, shoutouts to Frankie, love him dearly, the other day brought up the idea of fucking doing a RuneScape stream while I'm also reading a Wikipedia article. And I was just like, man, that'd be fun, huh? That'd be good, actually. Why don't I just do that? <laughs> So, I, I, and I reckon I'm probably gonna stay on this RuneScape kick for quite a while longer. So I thought it would be fun on days where I'm feeling it to, you know, also read a thing while I'm playing. I don't know if I want to do Dracula while I play. I would rather just dedicate all my time and energy to reading a Dracula when I do that. Um, internet and emotional state permitting. I'd like to get back to Dracula tomorrow morning. But, um... Yeah, certainly stuff like fucking Wikipedia or patch notes or whatever. That's uh that's decent enough for <laughs> for doing this. Speaking of which, uh I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. Log back in. Uh right, the mods. Okay. See how this goes. See how this goes. Um play. Wait, no, turn the other music off. No, no double music. Just one. Just RuneScape. Bit research? A little bit, I guess. Why does Twitch have stories now? I don't know. I kept getting notifications about it the other day, and I was like, man, shut the fuck up. I don't care. I, I don't care that Jeff Keighley is reminding me about the Gamer Awards in December or whatever. Like, <laughs> I don't want to know when the streams go live, man. <laughs> Just tell me when the streams go live. Hey, Aubrey, send me somewhere. Ah! It's happening again. Of course, as soon as I log back in. <laughs> Gotta catch up on the Dracula streams. It's been a while since the last one, so you certainly have plenty of time. I gotta actually check what chapter we left off on last time, frankly. And, uh, dive back into it. Heard from some other people's stories were meant for TwitchCon goers particularly. It seems like it's just been rolled out to a ton of people, because I kept getting a ton of those yesterday, and it was like, I don't care. I don't want this app to be Instagram. I want this to tell me when a stream is live so I can sit down at my computer and watch it if I have the time. <laughs> I don't I don't need this app to be like Instagram or Twitter. I already don't use those on purpose. Like Anyways, uh, as flawed mods are being removed, we want to ensure the new players can still create their early builds and equip mods onto their equipment. So a couple of early game mods are having their minimum drain reduced, and also their max drain reduced, which is cool. So uh, some mods are cheaper, easier to slot in. Innovation, make this app more like those apps. That's... Kind of unfortunately how it goes with fucking venture capital um, is, you know, you've got your investors being like, okay, well, we're giving you money so that you can improve the website, improve the application, improve the service. And it's like, okay, there we go. And then they get fucking antsy about it and they're like, all right, well, can you show us the improvements? Can you show us what you have changed and what you have updated? And it's like, well... What fucking tangible thing can you show a fucking investor that doesn't understand how a blog or a computer works? Show them that you've changed the way the app works and that it's working like this other popular thing and they go, ah, I see, innovation. You're changing it. Here is more money. We expect more soon. 
It's the market. Software development. Application development. It's a whole fucking thing. I have some feelings on it, and most of them sum up to, that's why I don't do software dev professionally anymore. <laughs> okay, so these mods are cheaper. You can slot them in easier. Uh, Mark 1 weapons. They are no longer in the intro mission. You can still buy them yourself for the sake of uh, mastery rank, but you gotta go out of your way to get them. I gotta put up spam on screen so you can't see my fucking bank pin. It is this. 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 Uh, and this. Okay. Hey, that's spam! Kill him! Okay. Put the air talisman away. Get out my mind talisman. And where was that again? It was near Barbarian Village or whatever. It's near Goblin Village. Okay, Goblin Village, which is um like over here. It's up here. Okay, let's go. We're going on a journey to Mind Altar. You remember Spam having one less P? No, Spam was always two Ps. It was always Spam. Classic fucking image of Spam. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, early game inbox and junction adjustments. We covered these already. They don't look like they're any different at all. Uh, you gotta do size vigil now as an intro thing. Um, they made it easier to do uh, Venus as well because they want you to do the open world intro quests at the start of the game. Everyone has enemy radar. 30 meter enemy radar by default on everyone. Uh, Wave Rider is easier now. You have fewer challenges per page, and the challenges themselves are easier. So you don't have to worry about doing quite as many sick, nasty Tony Hawk ass flips anymore. And you don't need to wait until you can afford, like, mods for your K-Drive to do them either, which is cool. Uh, what else, what else? Voxelaris is now easier. I mentioned that already. Uh, the Glass Gambit quest! That's new. I, I, I don't think they mentioned this in um in the original like dev workshops. Oh no, I shouldn't be going this way. I should be going this way. I think this is a, a new to this like patch notes thing. Reduce the length of each index round from three to two minutes. Increase the victory margin from ten to twenty. The original margin was a pain point for many players. And we hope that this improves that. Okay, neat. I don't even remember doing Glass Gambit. I don't remember what it was like. So, hey. I find this change bad or good. It depends. Smile. Uh, I remember not having much of an issue with the index, but maybe I'm just a gamer. Who knows? Uh, they're changing Natal because Natal is an important story quest. Uh, much lower MR requirement. And they have a description on the Uranus Junction about it. Uh, and then it's fewer defense waves. Okay. Uh, the Arcwing build time is shorter, so you can do the Arcwing quest. Limbo build time is shorter as well. Sai's Vigil has no MR requirement. Railjack Cephalon blueprint time has been reduced as well. Cool, cool. A lot of these are just, hey, you can actually access this quest faster now instead of waiting around for the quest to be available, which is... Yeah, that's good. Ooh, I, I, I can notice when the internet issues are happening, because every time it does, I'm, I stop being able to move around in RuneScape. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh yeah, my combat level's better than dwarves now. I'm better than dwarves now. Okay. Um, assassination target improvements. With the grind reduction we passed, we did on quests, we took a moment to look at certain assassination targets. Our goals were to reduce the overall time compared to some of these fights and improve waypointing when possible. Okay, Ambulus. Ooh, okay, so they're changing a bunch of the boss fights. Cool, cool. Um, where is our... Okay, it's close. Okay. Uh, so, Ambulus, you need fewer hacked Ambulus. 
uh, round timer or shorter. From four to three for single player squads, three to four for two players, six to four for three and four player squads. Uh, for experienced squads, taking down ambulance could lead to long periods of waiting. It sure fucking could. I remember that. We got a large grave here. That's cute. And we got bears here. Check it out. Let's use my talisman. Uh, the unfractailing of Warframe. A little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. I always thought this area was cool looking. It's just this weird, like, uh, brain in the middle of, like, a courtyard sort of thing. My room crafting go up, up. All right, let's get more. This would be faster if I had a way to teleport, but my magic is low right now, so I don't. It's a bit of a walk. Hey, more time to read, you know? More time to look at bears and get away from bears, you know? We can walk by Ice Mountain and look at Ice Mountain, you know? Let's see. Uh, they heck! Invuln period reduced from 10 to 6 seconds. All right. <laughs> Max damage received before becoming invuln from 25% to 35%. Increase the frequency at which Vehek becomes invulnerable to damage, therefore speeding up the fight. Till Rigor. Waypoints on Till Rigor now disappear when he's hiding. Good. It used to lead to like a fucking door that you couldn't do anything with and it was like, "Man, what the fuck's going on? Am I doing something wrong?" No. Added waypoint markers to Manix when they're active. That's that's also neat. This is as a villi bleh, visibility change. So that's good. That's good. Uh, Wisp and Necromech acquisition. This was also in the previous stream we did. Wisps don't disappear. Um, it's easier to get uh, Void Rigs because it's just Cambian Drift resources. And you can buy Necromech components from Lloyd. Accessibility and HUD improvements. All this stuff is also good. We also covered it in the, the Dev Workshop streams. You got uh, adjustable highlights to see things easier. Uh, for enemies, for allies, for yourself. That's good, that's good. A bunch of QOL changes for conservation. Just for the sake of making it easier to see what you gotta do and see where you gotta go and things like that. So that's good. Auto melee. You can flip this on and just hold down the melee button. Instead of having to tap it a lot. Remember when we were talking about the, the Splatoon Squeezer earlier? This is them deliberately designing to avoid that. That's good. More video games should do that. You can turn on auto melee if you want to do auto melee, and you can keep it off if you don't. It's your choice. You can do anything you want. Auto melee is much nicer. It it does seem much nicer. I'm I'm gonna enable that shit <laughs> next time I log in. I am I am eager, excited about that. I'm the number one Louie streamer on Twitch right now. Well, that can't be right. What about Louie? That will make a lick of sense. Uh, throwing weapons are excluded from auto melee because it's the same input to try and throw them, which makes sense. Maybe at some point they'll be able to change that. Since auto melee is removing a lot of the active element of meleeing, we are working on an addition to the system called Perfect Heavy Attacks that aim to release with whispers in the walls. They mentioned that on the dev stream and didn't specify what that means yet, so that'll be fun to see what that ends up being in a dev stream or two. Uh, you can mouse over buffs and debuffs in your pause menu to see what they do. That's cool. Update history screen. You can click on this to see what was added in updates visually. That's cool. There's little, little individual things you can click on for summaries because, as they said in the dev stream, players don't read, which made me sad, which is why I'm doing this stream specifically. <laughs> to force you all to read with me. Yay! But yeah, it shows you what's new. It shows you how you can do it. And it's a little link to the marketplace in case you just want to fucking buy it right away. And there's buttons you can click on them to see as well. Uh, other HUD changes. If a weapon has a special trait, you can hover over it to see what it does. It'll show you what they do, instead of having to just look it up on a wiki. So that's cool. Hey man, you wanna let me go to the runecrafting? You wanna let me go to runecrafting? You wanna let me go runecrafting, man? 
Can I go essence? Thank you. I get essence now. Uh, let's see. Rank bonuses and move to the upgrade screen just above ability icons where players can still access that info on hover. Uh, preview feature when adjusting visual effects. You can swap in Cardins in the arsenal. That's good, that's good. Instead of having to go to uh, Cavalero to do that. Cavalero, Caviero? I don't remember how to pronounce his name. Updated reticles reaction when hitting headshots to be more visible in red. Cool. I like to know when I'm hitting headshots better. Uh, damage number color slot for non-critical damage, so you can make it not white if you want to. Uh, you can see how many slots you own when hovering over an item that requires slots in the foundry. It's it's good to know how many slots you have when slots are limited in cost platinum, even if it is, you know, relatively quick and easy for free-to-play players to get platinum via trading. It's still good to know when you have to spend platinum, you know? <laughs> Railjack crew members can be customized by hovering over their character models. Mm, okay. A new pop-up message when picking up convergence orbs to explain convergence functionality. Eliminate enemies to earn bonus focus for the next 45 seconds will now appear briefly below the bonus focus pop-up. Okay, so it just tells you what they do now. Instead of it being like, here's a weird orb, I wonder what it does. Oh, huh, okay, it did something. That's good, that's good. Uh, you can claim all your Nightwave rewards with a click of a button. You can see how many trades you have remaining with another player. Add a drop shadow to buff icons in the HUD to make them easier to see. VFX feedback when health and shields are restored. Cool. Cool. Uh, phase 1 companion rework. We also covered basically all of this um, in a previous stream. Damn, the bitrate is fucked right now. Okay. Maybe I'll wait a sec. I drink water. If this is gonna keep happening, maybe I should consider not actually streaming again tonight. <laughs> Even if I was only kind of thinking about it earlier. It is a pain, but again, there is nothing I can really do to tell people to stop doing construction outside my house. Anyways, companion reworks. Uh, companions are now immortal. They can't permanently die. No real bad changes so far. Yeah, this is a really good patch, IMO. Um, the, the like shield changes seem really great on paper. I would have to play with it more, but I like the way they sound. And uh, like the Archon Hunt changes seem good on paper. Again, need some fiddling to see. Uh, a lot of these other changes are just, yeah, this is something that would have been really good for the game, and I'm glad they finally added it. You love to see it. You truly love to see it. Companions no longer die, which means you can now bring any companion to like a higher level mission and not be fucking yourself over. More interactive mods that offer ways to play alongside your companion instead of it being mostly autonomous. That's fun. I like that. Changes to many companion mods to support the first two goals of death states and improving basic survivability. Nice. Okay. So, again, we covered most of this. The big one that I do want to hit up is the new mods they're adding, but uh, basic change. Kabots, Kubros, Moas, and Predacites. They'll still collapse on the floor like they used to. You can still go pick them up if you want, but now um, what happens is when their like timer goes out, instead of it being, oh, they bled out and they died and they're gone for the rest of the mission, it's they revive themselves. They get up and they keep helping you out. Sentinels uh, will just get, like, damaged floating by you when they die, and they'll just self-repair. And so they come back, and they can be used again. Vulpophilas are the same. Uh, Venari is the same, and you can also use your ability to spend energy to bring it back right away. Why are you walking this way? Stop going this way. You gotta go this way, girl. Uh, vacuum and Animal Instinct keep working while the Companion is incapacitated. Companions can now recover from being downed in arbitration missions instead of staying dead for the duration of the mission. That's good. <laughs> that is a very good change considering how useful Companions are for a lot of utility stuff and like essential for quite a bit of build craft. Stat changes. Uh, 
Health, shields, and armor refactored across the board. They have more of it now. There's just a single guard here. You can trick or treat him. Can you trick or treat the bear? No, that's a shame. Oh well. It would have been good. Uh, non sentinel companions now gain their full health and shield values immediately when you require them. You don't have to, like, level them all the way up to max to get them uh, to have decent defense values. They just have them now. That's good. And they give, like, more specific numbers here if you want to look at them. They're good. They're all buffs. They're all pretty substantial buffs. Uh, consistency and companion healing. We also already covered this. Um, more abilities work now on your pets to give them health and stuff. Cool. Changes to existing mobs. My runes. I can make water runes now. Nice. I don't even think I have a water talisman. I gotta get that eventually. I can always unlock that easier by doing uh, Guardians of the Rift, but I haven't done that yet. Don't know anyone who doesn't put their radar on their pet? Yeah. Everyone slaps that shit on there, because it's a, it's a free and easy slot for it. To some degree, there is now just, like, radar by default for all frames now. But also, it's still useful to have more of that, frankly, so... Let's see. Uh, calculator redirection is better. The health, armor, and shield mods are better. Regen works differently now, as well as prime regen. Sacrifice does still revive you when you die, but it puts your sentinel into the incapacitation state and makes the self-repair longer. Uh, survivability mod. Link health shields and armor are are no longer just you want this instead of the other one. They're, they now are very good if your frame has a lot of that stat, but not so good if they don't. So that, you know, the other health, shield, and armor mods are actual things to consider. Uh, Jin's reawaken has been changed. Incapacitation time reduced by six seconds for each energy orb you pick up. Three hundred points of overshield for each collected orb. Jin's max overshield increased by nine hundred. Given that Jin's whole thing was it's a sentinel that doesn't die forever, yeah, it's nice that they gave it a little more something. <laughs> they're they're like making more substantial changes to like companion mods in a future patch. Because they want to see, like, how things perform now that things can, you know, live in any mission and help in any mission. Uh, pack leader works different now instead of it being uh, just your pet never dies if you're doing melee and it can add overguard. A bunch of these pre-existing mods have changed. We covered this in the previous stream. It looks all the same as what we saw there. Okay. New companion mods. Here's the exciting new stuff. Here's the exciting new stuff. A lot of quite old, crusty design decisions being tossed out with this. Yeah, it's great! It's, um... A lot of these are very much relics of how Warframe was... Like, five or ten years ago. And not really reflections of what it is today. So it's good to see things change like that. Uh, okay, so... These are all mods where, like, they're more interactive, where you do a thing with your pet and you guys get, like, some kind of bonus for it. Which I like the sound of. That shit's fun to me. So you can get them from uh, Cetus, from Fortuna, and from the Necrolisk. So it these just show what they do at max rank. So, Tandem Bond. Companion melee increases your combo by 6. Heavy attacks increase your companion's melee by 30% of melee damage multiplied by your combo multiplier for 30 seconds. So if you want your pet to be a melee killer, and you're also a melee killer, you can do that. And that's good. But that gives, A, it gives like melee pets more of a chance to actually do some good damage. B, it's a fun feedback loop of they buff your melee stuff, and then you buff their melee stuff, and it keeps going, and it's, that's good. And you want your combo counter to go up so you can do heavy attacks, and then you want to do heavy attacks because they buff your pet. I mean, you want to be doing heavy attacks anyways on certain builds, because then you're doing more melee damage, but... This is neat. This is neat. Covert Bond. Finisher and Mercy kills grant your companion 10 seconds of stealth that attacks will not disrupt. Up to 60 seconds. Okay, so you can make your pet, uh, invisible, and it can keep on blasting people. That... That could be interesting. That could be interesting for, like, um... 
frames that go invisible real easy, like, like you know, Ash and Varuna and stuff. Getting finishers so that your pet can also stay stealth and keep on blasting with you. That's neat. Uh, Mystic Bond. Oop, I scrolled by accident. Allows your com after your companion uses abilities uh, with cooldowns five times, you can cast a Warframe ability without expending energy. Okay. So if your if your pet's got funny abilities they can use, uh, and they keep using them, it'll eventually give you a freebie. That's fun. That's cool. Some of these pet mods are great for your playstyle. Yeah, like, a lot of these are good because they're, like... Some of these are for, like, very specific niches or very specific frames, sure, but they still encourage, like, interesting gameplay decisions along those lines. So, like, I, I, I like that. Maybe some of these might end up needing to be buffed a little bit at some point, because, like, I'm already reading some of these and wondering, like, this is maybe going to fall off a little hard on Steel Path, huh? But maybe some of them will be better once, like, different pet buffs come in the... Uh, part two that they're doing eventually, but still, this is a really interesting idea. It's a really good start. I'm very excited for a bunch of these on a bunch of different frames. Mystic Bond is neat. Restorative Bond. Health orbs restore 60 more health and reduce companion recovery by three seconds. And so you might think, well, that's not too much, is it? It's just their 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 recovery is faster. However, consider. Please consider. Some frames want to be picking up a bunch of health orbs anyways because they're making them, uh, you know, like citrine. And you can also equip, um, what's the one that, like, converts health orb pickups into energy pickups? And if health orbs are giving you a lot more, then that means the energy they're giving you is also going to be a lot more, I think. I think. Maybe? If not, eh, it's still cool. You can get more healing. And then your companion can come back faster if you wait for it to blood. Equilibrium, that's always it, yeah. I always think it's energy transfer, but that's something else. Hey Holly, thanks for being you. Oh, your shucks. Voice acting chops are supreme. That's nice of you to say, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the resub, I appreciate it. Level? Uh, my mining level is 34. And I still have a bronze pickaxe. Iron Man, by the way. <laughs> I'm doing a bit of runecrafting because I need some fucking mind runes. I got a lucky drop of a, an air staff from a beginner clue scroll, so I don't got to worry about air runes for a little bit, but I need some fucking mind runes to cast a lot of early level spells. But yeah, there, there, there are frames, you know, like um, Lavos and Nidus and Inaros that don't have shields. And then frames like Grendel, who might as well not have shields, who, you know, you're, you're gonna appreciate more picking up a health orb, so that might be a consideration. For someone who never got into RuneScape, what is it you enjoy most about coming back to it? Uh... I don't know. It's... It's a busy work video game in a way that I always found compelling. I always found the, vi the busy work of it compelling and interesting and fun to do. Uh, not just from, like, a nostalgia perspective, because, like, a bunch of this stuff that I'm doing is, like, membership stuff that I never did as a youngin', so I have no nostalgia for it because I never played it. Uh, I don't know, there's also just something fun about, like, exploring and discovering a, a game like this that feels so, like, crusty and weird and old. It's got weird stuff about it you can figure out. And it's got pretty environments, and it's got nice music, and it's a fun point-and-click adventure game. Lavos does have shields. He doesn't have much of them. He is largely a health boy. I think? Unless I'm getting him confused with someone else. Although I guess I did accidentally say, yeah, he has no shields. I didn't mean that, but I said it. Oh yeah, Kalervo also doesn't have shields. I forgot about him completely. I have not unlocked or played Kalervo because I haven't done any... Um, any Juviri stuff yet. Gotta get around to him. He looks fun as fuck. Anyways. Uh, so that's all the ones you can get from Cetus. Uh, aerial Bond. Airborne kills decrease companion recovery timer by 3 seconds and 9 seconds for headshots. 
Companion create a field of cold that increases up to 35% status chance and 10 meter radius while the Warframe is airborne, lasting for 3 seconds after returning to the ground. This is the Zephyr Bond. This is the Titania Bond. If you play her a certain way, this is the Hildren Bond. That's fun. That's cool. I, I like the sound of this one. I like fucking with it. Um, cold is not necessarily the most impactful valuable, st valuable status, but hey, if your pet is just unleashing a field of enemies get slowed, and also, like, doesn't it also do something with, like, critical damage or thresholds now? I don't remember. Um, but anyways, a, a free fucking this is slowing people down is pretty good. Cold buffs crit damage now? There you go, it also does that. That's also cool. Centered on the companion or the player? It's- it- the wording seems to imply companion. Which... That's- that's still good if you've got, like, you know, a sentinel that's gonna be near ya. You love patch notes? Good news, Tyler. This is the patch notes stream. <laughs> we read Splatoon patch notes. We read Old School RuneScape patch notes. We're reading Warframe patch notes. Pretty soon I'm gonna have patch notes about my fucking, like, road in front of my house. Because people were doing construction there and I kept fucking with the internet because they were tearing up the road and jostling the fiber optic cables. <laughs> I'm gonna have house patch notes! Understand why irons just buy runes if they aren't actively trying to train rune crafting? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, fortunately or unfortunately for all of you, uh, I fucking love making shit myself and not having to buy it, so <laughs> we're out here runecrafting. We're out here fucking runecrafting. At least for a little bit. I want to get like a decent enough stock to do a bit of magic leveling. Mostly just because I need to get fucking feathers to fletch for arrows. So I might as well also level magic a little bit while I do it. I'm not super concerned with looking up what the most efficient ways of doing things are, but I figure, you know, I can get a couple of birds with a couple of stones. Have a good time. Hey, bro. Sandwich? Free triangle sandwich. Okay. Thank you. I'll put that in my damn bank. We love you, sandwich lady. We love you. Hang on, I gotta pull up the bigger chat window again. I accidentally tabbed out of it. See more chat messages. They were playing jump rope with the internet cables and letting sharks chew on them. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Anyways, more bond mods. Astral bond. Damage dealt by your wizard grants 120% void damage to your companion's attacks. Companion void damage adds amp and energy efficiency to your wizard for 5 seconds. That's... Interesting. That's interesting. I imagine the niche of that is maybe largely gonna be like if you really want to get a void proc for bullet attractor, or um, if you want to tear through Exum's shields easier. That's interesting. That's interesting. I, I, I don't know how much I'm gonna be fucking with that one specifically, but it's something. It's something. Momentous Bond. Killing Eximus enemies grants 120% bonus of a random elemental damage to your companion for 30 seconds. Reduces recovery by 12 seconds. Uh, I think the fun niche idea of this is going to be putting it on a hound with that one precept that lets it just straight up steal Eximus powers. So you can have them steal an Eximus power and then you can give it <laughs> more elemental damage and status. <laughs> And then if it dies, it comes back really easily. That's a cute idea. That's a cute idea. Uh, reinforced bond. Oh, this is the... Uh, by the way, the bone collector is there. They're collecting bones. You gotta respect them. They're the bone collector. This hound is gonna make you get so fucking sick. You're gonna get so ill. It's gonna be fucked up. And it's gonna happen to you. Uh, reinforced bond. This is the... Hildren and Mag and uh, Harrow and a couple other frames uh, bond. If the companion exceeds 1200 maximum shields or overshields, 
your fire rate is increased by 60%. Reloading restores overshields to your companion. Do you do you have overshield capability on your frame? Slap this on your pet. Anyway, start blasting. Tenacious Bond. Oh, this is also a harrow-ass one from the looks of it. Headshot kills. Oh, you could probably also use this on Mag if you, you know get him in a bubble and then shoot at the top of the bubble so the homing shots go for uh, headshots. Wrong button. Uh, teleport. Let's see. Headshot kills reduce recovery timer by three seconds. If the companion's critical chance is over 50, then you gain plus 0.6x final critical damage multiplier. So that could also be interesting on frames that either want to get headshots anyways, or have ways to more easily get headshots. Like, Harrow kind of wants that. Harrow would love that. Mag could do okay with that as well, I think. Duplex Bond. Okay, here's the one that I called in advance. They showed this one on stream, and the, like, uh, in-development text didn't mention anything about a clone limit, and I said, there's no way they don't slap a clone limit on that fucking thing. <laughs> Here we are. Companions will clone itself each time you expend 100 energy, up to three clones. <laughs> Saw it coming, still sad about it. You can't have infinite dog tech anymore, but... Garuda can still summon three hounds. <laughs> you, 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 can, you can straight up do the fucking, you can do the gimmick build of you have uh, Varuna, and then you have your dog with you, and then you spend a bunch of energy, and now you've got four dogs with you. Like her four dogs that like follow her around in her, in her heart and soul or whatever. Is that three clones at a time? Yeah, that's, that seems like the wording to me, I am a... Clones live for 30 seconds, their kills have a 50% chance of dropping energy orbs. See, that's... It's the fact that they need kills that gives me pause for a second, because, like, there are quite a few companions that kind of struggle to get kills on their own, and there's quite a few, like, sentinel weapons that struggle to get kills on their own. So this is kind of like, okay, well, if you're using a sentinel, you kind of have to equip them with a fucking Vergla, then... And then if you got a dog, uh, hope they're one that can fight well enough. So that'll- it'll be interesting to see how this one actually works and plays out. But I do love the idea of this. I love the idea of just having infinite dogs appear. By which I mean three dogs appear. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler, for posting three dogs! <laughs> I'm gonna pin that. I love that fucking dog video, it's so goddamn loud. See, th this definitely isn't going to be, like, an endgame, super easily, like, you know, grind through steel path type of build. But it's going to be a really fucking funny build. So I want to try and do it. So I want to try and do it. <laughs> Alright, let's see, what else? Seismic Bond. While a channeled ability is active- No, th these- these mods and arcanes and stuff that work on channeled abilities are always- they- they puzzle me a little bit, just cause, like... The selection of abilities that counts as channeled abilities sometimes feel a little weird in terms of, like, the effect they're granting alongside it. Like, there's one arcane that you get from- man, fucking Romeo's trying to talk to me, fuck off, dude. There's one arcane that I think you get from Duviri that's like, when you have a channeled ability up, you get more health. And then it's like, oh, okay, so what would this apply to? Here's a bunch of frames that do channel abilities, and it's like, well, they're either not a health tanking frame, or their channeled ability makes them invulnerable. <laughs> so... It's a little odd. Maybe this one will be different. While a channeled ability is active, companion melee attacks create a 4 meter shockwave for 30 seconds of their melee damage. Damage dealt by your companion increases your ability efficiency by 3% for 12 seconds. Maximum 10 stacks. Okay, that does sound fun. I do like the sound of that. Uh, for the sake of flavor, I want to put that on Atlas. <laughs> because Atlas has two channeled abilities. You have the walls and you have rumblers. So you just press those two buttons. <laughs> and your dog is out here making shockwaves for you. Or your cat, or whatever. That does sound fun. I like the sound of that. Even if it's not, the viewability efficiency is good, uh, 
Especially on, like, if you're able to stack that a bunch on frames that are going to be doing a bunch of casting anyways. Like, you want to be doing your, uh, your fucking stone laser gazer at people a bunch on Atlas, and you want to be hitting that punch anyways a bunch. So, like, that'll make all that cheaper. That'll make it easier to keep your tank filled up. So that's interesting. I, I still need to fucking do the Romeo and Juliet quest, because I want to do all the quests. I just haven't gotten around to it, and so I like, you know, telling people, yeah, we're going to do quests to the stream. We're not doing quests to the stream. I'm just doing menial labor while reading stuff. But quest streams are dedicated to doing the quests, and streams like this are dedicated to doing a bit of reading, you know? <laughs> all right, Vicious Bond. Companion melee strips 15% of enemy armor. Melee attacks on enemies recently damaged by enemies apply the effect in a 9 meter- Ah, okay, so, uh, more armor strip for, um, frames that don't necessarily have that built in, or if you don't want to use, uh, the, the tank-ass focus school. That's cool, that's interesting. I'm, I'm almost in favor of, you know, having more utility options that do stuff like that, so you have more helmet options available to you kind of thing. Oh, oh, oh. Contagious Bond. Oh, I get sick. No, Anime Queen, not media labor, menial labor. M E N I A L. It's different. It's different. Uh, Contagious Bond. When your companion kills an enemy affected with a status effect, 50% of the status effect spreads to other enemies in 9 meters. That's fun. I can see that having some uses. Thinking about the concept of media labor, that's streaming. I'm laboring to provide you with media. I'm laboring to provide you with media. <laughs> shattering impact? Does shattering impact work on um, Helios Prime's melee weapon that it has? Because I'm wondering if you could do something goofy with Shattering Impact and also Vicious Bond, and it just starts, like, you know, shooting out glaives that take that take armor away. Hmm. Hmm. Could, could that be real? Could that be something? Could that be anything? <laughs> I wonder. I do wonder. I don't know if you can equip, like, multiple of these, but I, I, I kind of like the idea on something like Mirage, where you're going to be casting a bunch and don't really have, like, armor strip or anything like that. Having it make a bunch of clones that take armor away while you apply wicked status and blasts to people. That, that could be something if you can equip more than one bond mod. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Into Contagious Bond. Manifold Bond. Companion Precept mods apply status effects from companion weapons. Killing enemies with three or more unique status effects reduces companion ability cooldown by three seconds. So I guess that's like specifically for if you want your 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 robot to be more of a caster. They'll, they'll apply more statuses, which is good for, you know, priming enemies so you can hurt them more. And then they can do their abilities more as well. That's, that's interesting. Work is still ongoing for this mod. We're aware of some robotic companion precepts which do not trigger the bonus status effect. Interesting. 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 Further QOL changes. Sentinels now avoid Arsimus Eximus explosions if you also dodge. Okay, that's good. Uh, I didn't know that was a thing, and I also brought that up last stream when we read these. Shield gating applies to companions. They can get overguard. Um, health and energy conversion will now enable picking up orbs at max capacity. Map icons for each companion type to identify the location. Uh, Kavat incubator is cheaper to craft. Uh, companion HUD information is better. Uh, implants error is more <laughs> accurate. Oberon's passive applies to all companions. Oberon is finally getting something. Oberon is finally fucking getting something. Oberon finally has something. You could maybe theoretically do some kind of build with Oberon and a companion with, like, the cloning thing so that Oberon's passive applies to all of their your buddies. Hey, good for Goat Dad. He needed something. 
Companions can't be staggered, so they can't just be chain staggered forever. Cool, cool, cool. Hydroid rework. We went into this pretty extensively last time. Um, Hydroid can play the video game now um, and doesn't have abilities that are kind of cute but don't do much. Hydroid's whole thing now is corrosion. Hydroid's whole thing now is applying corrosive that's better than normal corrosive and actually takes off armor forever. And full strips armor. And also gives armor to you and your teammates. And also gives you bonus corrosive damage. And also your funny wave you can drive around is now a grouping ability instead of a fling enemies into the wall ability. Uh, etc, etc, etc. Um, and you don't have to charge your cannonballs. Uh, we did an entire covering of this in, um, in, in a previous stream. They're, they're specifically talking more specifically about, like, augments and stuff, so we'll definitely hit those up more specifically. Uh, but yeah, you, you don't charge up Hydroid's abilities anymore. You just tap them now, like any other ability. Uh, I kind of liked the charging, just because it's fun to hold down the button and a bigger blast happens, but, like, with the way you want to play Warframe, this is definitely a better change. <laughs> I will miss it a little bit, but, yeah. I think it was a good change. Um, so instead of ragdolling enemies, your Tempest Barrage staggers them. Uh, you do corrosive damage and status by default on your barrage now. Uh, the Augment is now Viral Tempest. It has a chance to apply Viral instead of Corrosive. Uh, it doesn't do impact anymore. It also no longer grants ability strength. Yeah, that makes sense. Now that... Um, now that this is, like, actually a more useful skill, uh, the, the the ability strength extra on it was kind of like a, hey, please use this, please make this work, we're begging you. But it's like, no, this is actually good at what it does and fits into its kit now, so you don't really need the extra strength. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Changes to viral to maintain its relevance with the other changes. In light of the punch, corrosive and viral packs in comparison to corrosive and impact, the ability strength buff was removed for balance purposes. Realize the patch notes you're reading are not about RuneScape? Yeah, we, we already read the RuneScape patch notes. I got more patch notes to read. I'm reading the morning paper. We're getting the updates. And also, yeah, uh, a another side effect of Hydroid getting buffed is more people are going to be playing Hydroid, which means more people are going to be using the Cool as Fuck Deluxe skin. I'm gonna be using the Cool as Fuck Deluxe stuff. It looks awesome. Tidal Surge. You can steer it better. Um, you can, you can jump it to get out of it. Uh, it's it does the sk the speed no longer scales off ability range. <laughs> Made to ensure controlling the wave behaves consistently. Okay, fair. Uh, no longer violently flings enemies. They they get grouped together. It's now a grouping ability, which is useful. Frames like having those. It does corrosive status. The, it applies more status based on how long they've been in there. Uh, it also cleanses all your statuses by default, instead of needing the augment to do it. And uh, the title impunity augment mod just applies to teammates now. New sound effects to go with the ability. Cool. 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 Hey, congrats on hatching your Grendel Prime, Bart. Bart? Part. Grendel Primes are born from an egg, and it's beautiful. Love to have more abilities not designed to make your team mad at you. Yup. Speaking of which, Undertow is gone. <laughs> Undertow is gone. Undertow was the be in a puddle and slowly choke enemies out, and teammates forget that they can shoot into it, so they kind of get mad at you for stalling the game out. And it, it, it was a cute... It was a cute thematic move, but it wasn't terribly effective as far as doing things in the video game. Uh, and now we have plunder instead. I'm, I'm also going to miss the puddle. The puddle is cute. They removed a little bit of Hydroid's cuteness in exchange for him being a salty old sailor and a tough old grandpa now, which I can live with that. I can live with that. They're good changes, even if I miss some of his cuteness. Uh, so now you have Plunder, which what that does is when enemies have corrosive statuses on them, you use that to permanently steal the armor that you've reduced from them, and it gives you a, a buff that gives you more armor and gives you more weapon damage. 
which is cool, which is cool, which is cool. Uh, and now the Augment mod instead makes Plunder heal your teammates within ability range. And also heal yourself. So you still have that um, Augment for healing utility. Tentacle Swarm now holds enemies upright instead of ragdolling them, which again, slamming enemies around was very cute. I'm gonna miss that. But you can actually land headshots now, which is good, because a lot of mechanics in the video game now revolve around you landing headshots for other effects, so... <laughs> it's good to have a frame that doesn't just make that harder. Um, you don't have to charge it anymore. Um, tentacles are better about grabbing enemies within the range of the ability. And it's got new sounds and visual effects. No change to the Augment. The Augment is fine. The Augment was originally the one niche this frame had, and is now just a cool option that you can choose to go for. So that's good. That's good. Okay, I gotta go on break, actually. It's break time, so we're gonna flip here. I'm gonna log out real quick. Um... We have a couple more patch notes to go through when I get back. Um, and I gotta wrap up stream eventually-ish, because I want to have dinner with my folks. Um, but I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna get more drink, I'm gonna get, uh, probably not a snack because I got dinner soon, but I'm gonna get more to drink, have a stretch, look outside, look for birds. Uh, get up, have a stretch, maybe a drink or a snack for yourself. Uh, we'll be back in about three minutes or so. See you soon. I, I hit the button to make VLC play music and it's frozen the app completely. Uh. Oh, there we go. It's Disco Train. Enjoy!
I'm back. Yeah, the construction is all done. Uh, and folks were able to pull up and park in the house, so I went and said hi to my, hi to my parents and looked outside for birds and cats. Didn't see any. But apparently there's some scurrying around somewhere nearby. So that's cool. Uh, dinner is coming soon-ish. So I'm gonna try and wrap up the rest of these patch notes quick. Now that the internet seems like it's stabilized again, I might stream more later tonight. I don't know. I'll see how I feel. I might just want to go, Nah, I'm gonna take it easy. Um, but if you do see me live again, <laughs> then, hey, more RuneScape probably. Are the birds for dinner? Uh, I mean, not those birds. Not for my dinner. But I am getting a chicken parmesan, so bird is for dinner. <laughs> Not those birds, but... One of the cats might try and eat the birds, which I'm sad about. The neighbor's cats are very cute, and I do like seeing them outside, but also cat outside means they're attacking the, the local critters, and it's like, no, come on, go inside! Don't do that! <laughs> come on! All right, back to it. Zauba and Commodore Prime Suit Conversion. As part of our ongoing efforts to convert operator skins for drifter use, the operator Zauba and Commodore Prime Suits can now be equipped to your drifter. Future purchases of these customizations will now include the matching drifter variants. For those of you that already own these collections, the drifter versions will be added to your inventory upon login. Cool. So there's, they, they added a second version of your wizard you can get that is taller. And has a different voice. And so because they have, you know, a different model and different rig, not all the old clothes worked on them. So they've slowly been adding more and more fashion options for your wizard, which is good. Adding more fashion parody, I should say. Parody is in P-A-R-I-T-Y, not P-A-R-O-D-Y. That's different. DualShock 4 and DualSense controller support for PC. Hey, they're now officially supported on PC for Windows 8 and up. If you got one of those, and you like playing Warframe with a controller, that's, that, that's for you! Here's how you set it up. There's instructions here if it's relevant for you. It's not relevant for me, because I don't own a PlayStation controller, but hey. If you want to play Warframe with a controller on PC, more options for you. Haven't checked if the premium Zephyr cosmetics been converted? I think it has? Don't quote me on that. But I want to say that was one of the earlier ones they did convert for, for Drifter. But I'm not sure. Oh man, fucking- speaking of cool ass fucking outfits for your Drifter, Sign, I think you specifically would really like the anniversary, uh, Drifter suit. And I think you literally just get it by like logging in before the end of the year, so just log in and get that shit if you want that. Thank you, Lemony Leopard, for the raid. I hope you had yourself a wonderful stream today. Uh, we're reading some fucking patch notes. Let's go! <laughs> We've already read the old school RuneScape patch notes, so I'm reading patch notes for other games now. We're, we're probably going to be wrapping up stream in a little bit. But uh, hey, thanks for the raid. Thanks for stopping on by. I hope you all had a wonderful stream today. Let's see. Upscaling improvements. Added an auto option to the upscaling quality video settings. This determines the correct upscaling quality based on the output resolution. Replaced NVIDIA Image Scaler when using DLSS, which I always misread as dick lip suck suck. Not what that means. With AMD's RCAS. Gives more consistent results and means all upscalers now use the same sharpening. Added XESS support for DX12 and AMD's RCAS sharpening. I don't know what that means, but uh, that's good for someone who's a graphics pervert out there, I'm sure. Fixed graphical issues with the minimap and several on-hover pop-ups when upscaling options are enabled. Cool. Now here's the big one. Now here's the big one. Here's the fucking big one. Explosive barrel changes. This is what we've been waiting for all stream. Explosive barrel changes. Explosive barrels on paper may seem like a blast, but their impact in mission is not quite up to snuff. In this update, we've brought these environmental hazards back with a bang with the following changes. 
Explosive barrels now deal a percentage of an enemy's help to help health to help them scale with higher level content. Players will receive a reduced amount of damage from barrels to prevent <laughs> to prevent deadly accidents. <laughs> On par with the amount of damage they would have received before this change. Previously, these barrels dealt a flat amount of damage that had little impact on high-level foes. Boy, it sure fucking didn't. <laughs> For the longest time, explosive barrels have been a fucking joke. Is Warframe awesome now? Now, on the one hand, I think it's been awesome for quite some time. But on the other hand, yes, the game is in fact now playable. This one change has made the game playable, so, like, there's never been a better time to jump in. LN2 barrels, which are the cold barrels, and spent radium barrels for radiation, will now deal full stacks of cold and radiation status effects respectively for enemies standing within the shockwave. Good. <laughs> Slow them fuckers down. <laughs> I can't believe barrel meta is now online. Barrel meta is now real. We need a barrel frame now. Um, I don't know what that would fucking be, but we need one. They, they mentioned, um, offhand, very briefly, the Warframe coming with the next big update in, like, December. Literally just that their name starts with Q. And I'm trying to think if there's any synonyms for barrel that start with Q. <laughs> Not that I can think of. <laughs> Remove the 0.35 second delay before explosions upon barrel destruction. Reduced the range of explosion from 15 meters to 10 meters and added scaling damage values based on how close the enemy is to the barrel. Okay, so it's got a bit of a shorter range and some fall off to compensate for the fact that they actually are real now. They're real now, so they can't make them too real. Impl improved? Improved visual effects of barrel explosion to showcase the blast radius and make the kills feel punchier. Good. 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 Q makes you think of Quixote? If they straight up made a Don Quixote frame, I think that'd be really cute. What the fuck would that be? I don't know, but it's a good name. You know? <laughs> I'm hitting my forward to tilt at windmills. <laughs> this changes everything. Fixed explosion line of sight checks being blocked by other enemies. <laughs> Explosions will still respect environmental obstacles like walls, but enemies in the blast radius will not survive simply because they are standing behind someone else. I didn't know they were doing that! That's so fucking funny! I love when these changes come out because sometimes you learn about wild shit that was happening that you had no fucking idea about. These are cute decorations, by the way. <sighs> Additions. Two new reward options to the Steel Path Circuit Reward Path. Rivens and Kuva. With Drifter Opportunity Intrinsics at rank 9, you'll be presented with reward options of Availed Riven or 20k Kuva in addition to the weekly incarnate rotation for your circuit reward path. Okay, so there's more options for things you would want to keep grinding for once you've gotten all the steel path incarnans out of the way. Just like the incarnate genesis, the order you pick these rewards will determine what rank you need to complete in the circuit to earn them. Cool. More, more replayability options, I think, is good for stuff like that, that they want you to keep replaying. Added VFX when toggling between normal and steel path modes in the star chart screen. Cool. Several new post-quest voice lines to Saya and Cetus. Good! Good! I want Saya to talk more, I like her. Added a sound effect to mid-air rolls. Your aerial rolling will be silent no more. I forgot they were silent. Added new Ortis lines from the Cephalon Jokathon contest winners. This was a fucking contest? What? What? From June of 2020? Wow! <laughs> that took a hot minute, huh? <laughs> okay. Well. It's, it's cool that we're 
getting more Ortis lines. I've heard a couple of them when I logged in for a little bit earlier. Um, I like to hear Ortis talk, so I'm glad for more of those. Where did I go? More to the left. Okay. The pandemic hit Warframe development in an extremely specific way. It sure fucking did. Uh, li literally, um... What's Meat World again? Deimos? Deimos is Meat World, right? That content only fucking exists because of the pandemic completely, like, upheaving their entire, like, workflow. Which is very interesting. Uh, I remember Rebecca was talking about that in an interview I read a while ago. Neat to think about. Neat to think about. Added the Argo and Val blueprint to Samaris' wares for those who own the Drifter variant. Neat. Neat. Meat to think about, exactly. Ground finishers now ignore the armor value of enemies as other types of finishers do. This affects the following. It affects my runecraft level, I can get earth runes now. Hunter's Bonesaw now grants 120% finisher damage instead of status chance, since ground finishers now deal finisher damage, which does not proc status. Ground finishers are better finishers now. There's this one fucking augment for, um... What is it? The fucking Obex? The punching and kicking weapon? That I think has to do with ground finishers? Is that gonna be real now? Is that gonna be real now? <laughs> think it was in the works before? Eh, the, the story I remember hearing was like... Uh, Deimos was, like, a concept that they wanted to eventually, you know, expand and work on. But the scale and the scope of it and when it happened compared to other content and how it changed, you know, other content and other story stuff literally only specifically happened because of the pandemic changing their workflow and how they were working on the video game. Which is interesting. I think I'm remembering that right, at least. I'll have to fucking dig out that interview again because it was interesting. I just like hearing game devs talk about, like, how and why they make their games the way they do. It's cool. It's cool to know about how the sausage is made. Obex is fun. Obex is so cute. And I'm always so sad that, like, sparring weapons are a little bit, uh, not as valued as other melee weapons, but I keep wanting to use them, so I keep using them anyways because they're so cute. I literally love just punching and kicking people. It's great. It's awesome. Fixed several cases where the game was not recognizing a ground finisher for the activation of mods and arcanes. The intent is that ground, stealth, and parazon finishers should be equivalent unless explicitly stated otherwise. Duviri decrees will now accept ground finishers. Inaros' desiccation curse augment will now create sand minions on ground finishers. Arcane trickery will now activate on ground finishers! Okay, interesting. Arcane Ultimatum activates from ground finishers. Exodia Might activates from ground finishers. Arcane Trickery is a little bit of a meme, but it's still fun to play around with. Like, you you can do some goofy stuff with Ash, where, you know, you hit your initial like smoke grenade for invisibility, and then if you're able to get enough consistent kills with your Bladestorm, those count as finishers, so you can just keep procking invincibility and just stay invincible, invisible. Invincibility, invisibility. I sometimes misspeak those words. That's neat, though. Improved accuracy of water... Oh, water ripples. I thought that said water nipples, and I was like, Oh, word? <laughs> what do you mean by this? It's ripples. Uh, Varuna's Ulfren's Descent kills will now count as melee for synergy with Lycaf's Hunt Health Orb drops. Nice. You love to see synergy. Revamped how the game... Uh, I thought I saw someone talking to me and I got scared. Uh, someone saying they love the fashionscape. Anyways, uh, revamped how game audio mixes handle when casting abilities and firing weapons to improve spatial awareness. Spatial sound awareness. You'll be able to hear the environment and gameplay sounds much more clearly in certain scenarios. We fix some issues with certain abilities and weapons causing gameplay sounds to play back too quietly. Cool. Managed to get all four Grendel Prime parts in the duration of the patch notes reading? Let's fucking go! It's Fatboy Fall, get you one. You love to see it, you truly do. 
Teleport me, my man. Gaining health shield and overguard provides more gradual feedback in the health bar instead of instantly changing. Okay, so you see like a meter go kind of thing. And it sounds like they're maybe adding uh, sound as well, maybe? Or just visual effects, maybe. Improve the decree rerolling randomization to prevent the same decrees from appearing again after rerolls. Good. If I want, if I'm doing a reroll, I wanted to actually reroll. <laughs> Man, I gotta think about. I am trying to save up money for other stuff, but also I'm eyeing the Grendel Prime pack, and I'm thinking like, you know, I could just buy that. I haven't, I haven't spent any Warframe money in a while, and I like giving them money. I like their product. I could just buy Grendel Prime. I think about it some more. Someone donate money for Holly to get Grendel Prime? I mean, you don't gotta do that, but hey, if you want to get me a fucking treat or whatever, that's probably what I'd end up spending it on in the immediate sense. Uh, I I was partly thinking about it just because I was like, oh yeah, that also comes with Platinum. Oh, I could just use that to instantly get Dagoth. Hmm. Hmm. Wish you had money to give? Ah, oh, I appreciate the thought, but don't worry about it. You gotta look out for yourself first and foremost, you know? It's no worry. I'm just glad people are hanging around. Uh, where were we? Okay. In preparation for cross-platform play clans, the way resources are refunded from canceling dojo rooms and decorations has been changed to ensure parity between cross-platform and non-cross-platform play clans. Instead of it returning to contributing players' inventories, it's refunded to the vault. Okay, that's fine. It's very cool you get free premium currency when you spend any money. They don't do that for everything. I think the one exception is, like, when you specifically buy, uh, like, the prime accessories, which is just, like, the... Oh, a level up, huh? Which is just, like, you know, the unique cosmetics in a prime access pack. I don't think you get platinum for that, but, like, you still get the cosmetics, and I'm pretty sure you still get, like, the fucking three-month-long boosters, so, like, I can live with that. <laughs> uh, even if, you know, a pittance of platinum would be nice. All right. Uh, there we go. There's there's platinum in, like, the other Prime Access packs, but I, I, I think you don't get it in Prime Accessories? I think. Don't quote me on that. I forget things all the time. But yeah, there's a bunch of other things where, like, basically you spend any money on the game, and they're like, hey, thanks for spending money on the game. Here's some of the premium currency, so that you have more of the premium currency alongside of whatever else you just bought. It's cool. It's cool. Let's see. Okay. Hey, thank you approximately 49 crows for that four-month reset. Much appreciated. A what I missed Z stream. Hope it's going well. I'm walking Holytone. It's sickness. going pretty good. I'm reading patch notes. I'm grinding some media labor skills a little bit. Oh, the boosters are fucking great. I love having the boosters. <laughs> I love the game just going, actually, you're getting double. Actually, you're getting double of your stuff. I do, in fact, like it when there's options for me to spend my, my trade goods on making the grind less. Warframe notes that got released today? Sure is! We are close to the end of the patch notes, which means I'm gonna wrap up stream soon because it's almost dinner. But uh it's been it's been a fun reading stream. If you like reading video game patch notes or like listening to other people read video game patch notes, that's what this whole stream was if you want a podcast to listen to <laughs> of patch notes. <laughs> then the VOD's there for ya. Buffs or mechanics triggered upon health or energy orb pickup can now be triggered if your health or energy pools are max. Good! 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 <laughs> it used to be you had to specifically equip certain mods on your pet to make those work. Now they will just work. Okay. But if your buffs are fully stacked, you will no longer pick up these orbs at max health and energy. That's fine. That's fine. That's good, though. Oricon vaults on Deimos can now be highlighted by the Oricon Eye air support ability. Adjusted auto-install prioritization based on new Warframe health and shield values, as well as checking for shield recharge delay. Operator amps can now interrupt Dax abilities in the Undercroft, similar to how weapons fire can. Ash and Playable Stalker can now cast Teleport on defense objectives. 
This was previously fixed in the hotfix due to issues and inconsistencies with the landing spot. We have improved the targeting, prevent that, and have re-enabled it. Nice. Ash needs anything, so you'll love to see it. It it is a little bit funny that in a lot of a lot of ways I was kind of not super hot on Varuna when she launched because I was really hoping she would be like a fucking high health, high armor, like brawler, berserker type of character, which I guess you know that's kind of what Valkyrie is. But I like the sound of another take on that. But also, you know, after some time, I like what Varuna does. It is a little bit funny to me that she does kind of just feel like better Ash. <laughs> she's better Ash on the basis that she's a woman and she has boobs, but also she has a more interesting ability kit. <laughs> Updated imprints error message to be more accurate. They mentioned that earlier. Grandmaster founder aliases are highlighted in the relay's honored Grandmaster panels. Entropy burst and napalm grenades descriptions to clarify it applies after mods like rifle aptitude by changing base status chance to final status chance. I do also wish she was built like a fridge, yeah. I mean, yeah, Crows, you can definitely build her that way given how she drops a ton of health orbs. And so you can get like the stuff that gives you armor and more max health on health orbs. And that's how I want to build her when I eventually get her. But also it's funny that you can build her as just better Ash. <laughs> Every day I do more in, uh, beefy, hunky Varuna, though. We could have had it all. We really could have. Okay. Uh, updated Arcwing HUD assets with higher resolution ones. Okay. Secondary Outburst Arcane has received some buffs. We fixed it not functioning properly and subscription being inaccurate. Okay, so... On swapping to secondary weapon, consume all combo multipliers to increase secondary weapon crit chance and damage by 20% per combo consumed for 30 seconds. Now is that per combo multiplier consumed or per combo stack or like combo number? Like, does it turn the 12x multiplier into 20% times 12 or is it like every individual hit? I wonder. They hot-fixed flawed antitoxin costing 10,000 platinum? No! No! My status symbol! <laughs> how will people know how rich I am? <laughs> That's so sad. I never got to see it because I was too busy reading the patch notes. Oh, what a bummer. Oh, well. <laughs> Thermal Sunder- oh right, they talked about this uh, on Reb's stream this morning. Thermal Sunder, specifically in the helmet, um, was altered. It has an altered attribute, scaling from heat status on enemies capped to 10x ability damage. A deeper dive into its subsumed version on other Warframes showed that there was a damage over time issue where heat procs were scaling with unlimited exponential damage. Right, that's, um... Is that heat inherit, or is heat inherit a different thing? That's a thing that people do specifically to, like, power game, max level cap, steel path stuff. Uh, therefore, we've implemented the cap. Changed faction damage mod uh, descriptions to use multipliers instead of percentage-based stat formatting. Damage values have not changed, it's just the way that it's written on the mod. Okay, cool. Uh, faction mods are very strong and very good, and I'm glad they're not, like making them worse. They're just- it's now just easier to read. Times 1.3 damage to corpus. Better communicates how faction damage is calculated, since the calculation occurs when you hit the enemy as opposed to when you shoot it like other damage sources. Zeramin extraction button is added to the elevator to start a 60 second extractor timer for hosts and endless missions. Clients will still be automatically extracted when using this button. We've added the special functionality for hosts to allow clients to, the option to extract as well, should they wish to avoid a host migration. <laughs> Reduce shield on corpus allies in the prison break break narmer mission. Be more in line with Grenier Brothers' total health values. Okay, so they'll presumably live better. Or worse. Yeah, RNF, we were just talking about that. Um, I... <laughs> it's too bad that it's not 10k platinum anymore, because that's really funny to me. You can use tab to switch between the name and message text field in the add friend window. Non-critical little duck transmission and disruption missions can now be turned on or off with the enable hint transmissions toggle in the audio options. 
I like turn. I like hearing little duck. I don't want to turn her off. Uh, optimizations. Uh, Lightron and Carlin Genesis Trail Particles, DX12 Shader Prefetching, Systemic Micro Optimization to Direct X Shaders or Drivers, Micro Optimizations to Memory Footprint on All Platforms, Screenshot Capturing to Reduce Hitch Time, uh, Fix the Hitch in Performance when op Opening the Railjack Tactical Menu, Rare Crash that could occur when using DX12 after upgrading drivers, Rare Issue where clients could experience long hitches in Arcwing Rush if remaining players stayed at spawn, Micro optimization to DX12 rendering to DX12 prefetching, systemic micro optimizations to memory on all platforms. Here's known issues. Top fixes. Now I know some of you motherfuckers are so goddamn horny you're gonna black out when you hear top fixes, but let's let's try and keep it normal here. Kima's magazine size shrinking when it's used with the Equinox equipped with duality augment. Mirage's eclipse not providing the damage reduction buff when positioned in the shadowed area of Duviri and the Undercroft. Mira Eclipse is weird in general. It feels very inconsistent in terms of, like, where and how it gives you, like... I forgot to put my runes away. Oh, well. Where and how it, like, gives you the fucking... types of buffs it does and by what degree it gives them to you. And, like, having different lighting systems changes the, the degree of the buffs and things like that. It's... It's... Eclipse is so weird. And I kind of wonder if maybe they should change it someday. But if so, I wonder how they would go about doing that to make it, you know, more consistent and understandable as an ability. Gorgon and Karnan, not resetting when reloading if you're the client. I forgot Gorgon has a fucking Incarnan. I have to do, like, any Duviri stuff at all and start getting some of those. Uh, Antimatter drop damage being inconsistent between host and client? What? Was that a thing Antimatter Drop was doing? <laughs> With the same loadout, clients were doing significantly less damage than the host. That explains so much about how every time I tried playing Nova, Antimatter Drop felt like a fucking wet noodle. My god. Okay. That's great. Decree's going missing. Host migration causing clients to not receive decrees. Aura worm becoming immortal after destroying its rings. Uh, shooting enemies in Zephyr's tornadoes would not register critical hits. Uh, fixed weapons with Incarnate Genesis not being offered as options in Teshin's. Oh! Was it not offering the Incarnates? Oh, hang on just a sec. Uh, my dinner is here, so I'm gonna just really quick scroll through some of these fixes. Uh, there's some fucking fixes. Maybe I'll do a dedicated, I'll pull this up next time I stream and you can read Warframe fixes, because they're always funny. Um, but there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. That's literally the end of this, is just the, all the fixes. We did all the actual content, this is just bug fixes. Teshin was supposed to offer Incarnans? No, 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 no. Teshin offering the weapons that you pick in the cave for your Duviri run? It sounds like he maybe wasn't offering weapons that had Incarnans on them? Which is, hmm, uh-oh. <laughs> Oops. That's cool that that's fixed now. I, I like the sound of Duviri and I'm excited to play it. Because I like that it's just a built-in randomizer mode. I, I like that it's encouraging, hey, here's a randomizer. Play with some random stuff. See what it does. See how cool it is. That's fun. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to head off for now because I want to eat dinner with my folks. Um... Some other time I'll pull up the rest of these fucking patch notes and read all the fixes, because that sounds funny to me. Romeo, can you fuck off? Dude, get off my fucking dick. Get out of my life. I can't stand this bitch. We gotta do his quest soon. We gotta do his fucking quest soon. It's a built-in randomizer in a completely different game. Yeah, it's a really fun way of doing that, IMO. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it on paper. I gotta actually try it out. I wish that uh, Warframe ran better when I streamed it. Maybe I should invest in a new fucking computer. <laughs> I gotta do that at some point. <laughs> I gotta update this thing. She's old. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be the stream. Yippee! <laughs> thanks for thanks for tuning in. Uh, I had a good time. And I hope y'all did too. Uh, maybe I am live again tonight. Maybe not. I don't know. It depends how I feel. I might just I might just cool it for the rest of my evening and maybe play some Warframe on my own time. Uh but 
we are going to raid where's the raid here it is uh Pen yeah, Penny is live now doing more of her Spider-Man playthrough, so we're going to raid her. And you can go check that out. If you're ever checking out new stuff in Warframe, feel free to hit you up whenever. Fuck yeah. I will probably do that soon, sign, if you are down to game. Uh, but yeah. Uh, go, go, go watch Penny. She's playing Spider-Man. It's a real good time. I was hanging out there for a bit of it last night. It was a lot of fun. Maybe I'll stop by there tonight some more, if she's still going when I'm back at computer. But uh, until next stream, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the support today. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves and taking care of the folks around you. And I hope we see you again soon. Oh, it just canceled the fucking raid. Why? Twitch? Brother, what are you doing? All right. Well, now we're actually doing the raid. Okay. Well, I don't know why that happened, but it sure did. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves and taking care of the folks around you. And I hope we see you again soon. Take care.